Ah, much better. Now that the window is open, I will be slightly less sweltering in here. You know, one of the biggest problems with living in Norway is, chat, all of our houses are very heavily insulated. Which means that when you enter into a general time, like right now, where everything is still cold, but not cold enough to require long-term heating, it means that whenever you do actually do some heating and heat the house, well, uh, the house is always going to be too hot. And so when you turn on the computer, and the computer is like, I breathe heavily, then things get even hotter. And that is what we call hell. Yes, hell chat. Hell is what we call that. Speaking of hell, um, do I want to build anything else? Shrine. In Druce's footsteps. A cursor... The Trent of Pilgrims is Nah. Shrine. Hammer of Epiphany. Ooh. Uh, 15 to 20 for a two-handed hammer. That actually sounds complete and utter garbage, frankly. I don't think I want that. Um, profit factor plus two is nice, though. Complacency plus three. Indrus uh, Profit factor three. Drusian's complacency. A curse of sin. Indrus's footsteps. Troubling news arrived from Giannis, your lordship. While digging an irrigation ditch, the workers found a Xeno obelisk made of unknown material. It was delivered to a laboratorium and subject to a number of tests, one of which caused a reaction. The obelisk generated a low-frequency vibration, and the events that followed were catastrophic. A series of anomalies were recorded in the Epsilon II Majoris region. It is almost like Giannis itself is fighting us there. Many logistical chains have been disrupted. The only people who visit the uncontrollable territory are the wretches fleeing deeper into the region in greater and greater numbers. The observers report strange fires in the sky at night, completely imperceptible to the augurs. Aha. Esteemed ultra uh, alt requisitors are gathering freemen and daredevils for an expedition into the heart of the region. They assume a priceless trove of xeno mechanisms is waiting for them inside. Aha. The nature of Yarnus is rising up. It is a lucky coincidence that Yarnus harbors specialists who are not only experts on controlling life, but on destroying it as well. Even though reports from the Magos biologist Capella bear no mention of the storage of weapons of mass destruction, I have no doubt that they do possess some. They always have some lying around. I see no reason not to let them use them against this, whatever it is. Ah, Adelblad solution, nuke it. Pascal, deployment of fortified research stations in the affected sectors is recommended. The benefit of gathering more information justifies the increased casualty rate amongst personnel. And the cyclic creatures know more about this pestilence growth than we do. Something we must amend quickly. We should catch some mutants and force them to cooperate. That way we can learn what it is we are dealing with. You are a rather radical little lad. You know this, right? Operating heretical machinery. You want to do that. Working with mutants. You're just fine with it. You are weirdly extreme, I gotta say. Hmm. Um, I don't give him a bone very often, so let's give him what he wants. I am sending specialist Yano's capable of forcing compliance. If the region has been isolated, soon after quarantine, one of the escaped wretches emerged from the jungle and handed the wardens who met him a parcel with some kind of zine of artifact a message, accept this gift and leave the world in peace. The wretch was thoroughly interrogated, and so were dozens of other captive mutants. What little they were able to tell was of no significant value. Most of it was nonsensical peasant superstitions. Although all the wretches, as one claimed that if the affected region was left alone, it would not expand. This assertion was soon confirmed, and the neighbouring agri-complexes soon resumed normal operation. Good enough, I suppose? 
Lord Captain, after the decompression of Lady Theodora's secret workshop on Kiawagama, an epidemic of mysterious tech leprosy has broken out. Augments mutate into distorted forms, killing their hosts and the machine. Even entire assembly halls break apart into fragments that devour each other. How is that even possible? Melding into grotesque and insane forms. The Omega-18 Manufactorum, the epicenter of the epidemic, is cordoned off. But the disease will burst out sooner there than later. Eradicating the infection is our highest priority, but to completely eradicate the Manufactorum epicenter would mean inflicting serious damage to our resources supply unit. This unit I can propose another method of purging. However, the sacrament of the Omnisci that are available to me cannot be revealed to the laity. I ask that you place your trust in me. I have suppressed 18 different epidemics aboard the flagship and our officers have experience in setting up quarantines. We will send them to Kiawagama to lead the Tech Purgatory Squad. They will not return from the epicenter until the infection is eradicated and the preventative exclusion zone is taken down. Um, Pascal, you sound like you're the expert on this, so you go do it. The tech priests, armed with a mysterious device they assemble under the instructions of Pascal, have gone into the bowels of the Manufactorum. What happened there is unknown. Reports speak of a blue and green flash that illuminated the Manufactorum and the epidemic subsided overnight. The distorted mechanisms have been honorably melted down, and so were the bodies of the dead tech priests who carried the machines of the Magos Hanuman, as well as the burnt remains of the machine itself. Magos Pascal had refused to comment on his chosen methods of purging, calling it a revelation of the Omnisci that he himself could not comprehend before the device was given over. Many of the tech priests who had once maintained the Midmanforum were left without a function and transferred to service aboard the Rogue Trader ship. Alrighty then. Inferno, profit factor, security, minus three. I don't like that. Unwelcome guests. Profit factor two, efficiency minus three, mechanisms three. Um, efficiency minus three. I don't like that. I don't like any of those, actually. Those are all kind of terrible. Earthbreaker, Plasteel, and Andamantine. Prometheum, Captive Xenos, Craven's Bane. That's not bad, actually. Actually, that is pretty fucking chill. And reputation with the Imperial Navy, I'll take it. Praising the Muse, profit factor plus five. That's pretty great. I'll take it. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Security. I'll take it. Foulstone. And then Druce's footsteps. Right, so I was heading over there. If memory serves. Which it might not. Show completed quest. Do not. Force bidding Ephrates 2. Uh, 11 plus judgment belongs to the rogue trader. Euphrates 2. Is there a search function in this video game? I sure as fuck hope so. Um. Ah, there it is. Okay. Alright, so I go up there, 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 there. What? Did I not go there directly? Ah, oh, never mind. Well, I can go up there directly. Uh, Cthulian the Tharn. Hey, I dropped some code explanation in chat if you're interested. Also, can I get an explanation of the Discord joining process again? 
I don't know what I just clicked on, but I hope it was good. I hope. Uh, the Discord joining process. Yes, you just join using the link. Uh, is there a link in this? There's not a link in this one, is there? Okay, hold on a second. I will add a link to this video as well. That's all you need to do. You just need to click the Discord link, and that will take you to the Discord platform. Once I find the actual... there. There, there should be a Discord link in the description now. And all you need to do is click on it, and then it's a day before you get into the main server, then you can message me from there. Comrades, a film was added. I, these are just random dumbass events. I. Celio, the physics bit mind just. That's throwing rares. Maybe that was actually important. Okay, well, unfortunate. But most of the time, those are dumb and useless, and so I've started just clicking through them now. Uh-oh. It's never a good thing when it suddenly starts loading the ship view. That usually means that something absolutely terrible has happened somewhere else. Oh, never mind. Cinnamon bun kitten. His supreme glorious greatness, Art of Terror. How wonderful it is that I have found you here. In my... In my private quarters. Yes. How... How wonderful you discovered me here. Please forgive me. My powers are sometimes too insistent in the attempt to break free from my control. You have made great strides, pet the cinnamon bun kitten, always pet the kitten. I came to deliver good tidings. I have spoken with the house navigators through the atlas. Of late, I can feel with increasing clarity how our connection is growing stronger. Despite the descent in its mists, the house of Celio has been able to keep a precarious equilibrium, thanks in part to your unexpected arrival on Eurus V, and the resolution of the conflict at the Dargonus reception. Not all of Celios concur with your decision, but none can deny the impact that you and no one else have had on the house's present state of affairs. There is more I wish to tell you. It is about the visions that I have come to experience at an increasing rate during warp jumps. The same visions come to me again and again and again. It is as if I am going mad. If you see, these visions are about me, the Atlas and Tisiphone Ocelio, the house's previous novator. I have seen Tisiphone's experiments, the ones that involve the navigators from the Sethala branch, which she has rumored to have destroyed for disobedience. But the visions told me an altogether different story. One where the Cephalus helped Tisiphone create the Atlas, and they vanished immediately after the experiments were done with, perhaps, I can, no, I know I can find the way to the Palace of the Atlas if I recreate Tisiphone's journey from my vision. A real palace, not the psychological illusion to which the Ocelio Navigator can reach out. I've always had a, a feeling that it truly exists in our world. Now, however, I know it was absolute certainty. Ah. Character quest. Hmm. What did the visions tell you? I saw Tisiphone experience an epiphany in a, epiphany, Tisiphone, in a dream, just like my visions came to me on our travels through the warp. She beheld the planet hidden behind roiling warp storms. The world promised her great power, so Tisiphone gathered the, the Sithalas, her most devout followers, to go on a suicidal journey through the Tempest. I know not the details of what happened on that planet, but it was there that the Sithalas sacrificed themselves for an experiment of some kind, and it was there that House Ocelio obtained its Starway Atlas. For the first time ever, I have an opportunity to find answers to the questions my mentors so deftly avoided. Why did Tisiphone choose me? What is the Atlas? Is it true that House Orcelio's past is drenched in blood? Please, his supreme glorious greatness, Sir of Terror, do not snap this tauntly drawn string of destiny, my destiny. 
journey with me into Tiffany's wake to the distant stars. Okie dokie. If you say so, kitten. The hounds are still watching me, both the renegade and the loyalist. I doubt that any of them will agree even to a brief armistice for the sake of learning the truth about the Atlas origins, and I do not wish to see House Orselio lose even one more life to another fratricidal skirmish. No, I shall go after the answers about our past on my own. Mm -hmm. That is best that we go alone. Thank you for understanding, Road Trader. And now, permit me to take my leave. I must start preparing for the journey. From what I have been able to glean, we must first travel to the... the Ocelli Prophecy System. Odd that. Could it be that the history recordings are lying? And Kalin Ocelio is not whom the star system is named after? Either way, that was the system which the Sydney embarked on their journey, and we are going to follow in her long-forgotten footsteps. Okie dokie, then. Speaking of bad ideas... There. Well, let chat do a little bit of voting on this. So, the Andy and Lele series, which I'm doing, has a personal little I find this fun and engaging passion project. Uh, has a big split, whether you go the normal, healthy route, where Andy and Lele don't start banging each other. If you don't know what that game is, by the way, I highly recommend you play it. It's a very, very, very good, in essence, visual novel style game that I tremendously enjoy. And I'm currently doing a, play, doing a playthrough of it with my friend Cass Voxan. Where we're doing voice acting of it. And we're going to do commentary as well in the, the next one we're planning to do. And that as a choice between either having the two uh, brother and sister not bang each other. They're also murderers and cannibals, incidentally, in case you were wondering. Or there is the far spicier route. Which might include Ca Cass, poor little Cass Voxan, saying words that she never thought would escape her pur pure, poor little Christian lips. <laughs> Probably not. Being a professional voice actor, I'm sure she'd said some filthy shit in her life. You know the answer, Arch. Well, who knows? <laughs> Why is the healthy choice even an option? Who well, knows? See, every time I think... I think I know what you guys want. I end up being wrong. I figured you guys would really want the Space Wolf, and instead that turned into an enormous bidding battle. I figured you guys would all hate Incendia Quarter, and yet there was a bidding battle to save her, so I don't even know. I have no goddamn idea what you guys want sometimes. You are facing several Eldari scout ships. The Xenos are in no hurry to attack, and time seems to have slowed down. One roof and carnage will ensure. Okay, Irelet, uh, would you like to tell your friends that I'm going to fucking murder them if they don't stand out of my way? Irelet's speech is met with a torrent of Eldari abuse. That is too much for even your elucidator. The Xenos accuse her of betraying her kind by inspiring, conspiring with the monkey and unceremoniously cut the connection, yet the ships are no longer blocking the way. Okay, well, you know, a little bit of racism. Nobody, nobody's ever been hurt by a little bit of racism. So long as they're not in my way anymore, that's, that's really all I care about. And no, I'm still swimming in Plasteel, so no thank you. Controlled democracy chat? Hmm, maybe it is controlled democracy. And ironically, though, I have no idea what you guys think sometimes. Seriously. You know, we need to play more RPGs together, because half the time you come up with some complete nonsense that I was not expecting, which I kind of enjoy. 
The Lord Captain of the United Corps of the Explorators and the Militia Force is ready to attack the heretics who took over at Euphrates too. The commanders recognized the Lord Inquisitor's sanctions and agreed to cede the right of supreme command to you. They asked that you summon a council of war in order to establish the plan of attack. How should we respond? Alright, summon them to the bridge, I guess. Consider it done, your lordship. I will notify the commanders that you are ready to meet with them. A Vampire the Masquerade 1 playthrough. Oh, God, I don't. See, I, I said I was never going to play that game on stream, because you need to experience it for yourself, but... Oh, there's, a lot of, there was, there's a lot of fun things the chat could engage with there, I suppose. Hmm. You know, choosing classes that had a lot of choices in that game. A lot of choices. A lot of which are terrible choices. Hmm. 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 Maybe. Maybe. Unit Opticon 22 initiating identification official greeting procedure unlocking the option of strategic data exchange. Which one of you Huskals is his supreme glorious greatness Sir Arch of Terror von Valencius? I am Thorbald Ironhide and I wish to see the mortal who was granted the honor of leading my pack into battle. Hmm. I know the halves of a warrior when I see one. You are no indolent hook. Good, I give my approval. We will hunt the sorry heretics together. You haven't changed, brother Thorbald. Uppity and brazen without measure. And you call yourself while on another Drekkers like it's your own. Carry yourself. I mean, you do too, Ubugar. You don't get to say that. Such is the breed of leaders, Ulfar. We stand out. Tis you ever lost who can't find his way when the sun is right over your head. And up's gone 22. How did you go from overseeing logistics command to commanding armies? This command promotion hierarchy status update was executed following the death, decommission, deconstruction of the ship Teeth of the Wrath Gear. The fleet's war conclave was operating aboard the vessel. Unit Opticon 22 received premature rank promotion modernization to make us dominus based on its extensive catalogue of recorded combat engagements. <laughs> All of my superiors have been slaughtered. May your service benefit from the updated protocols that were bestowed upon you, and the new analytical data that was entrusted to your elucidization. May the Omnisire guide operate this unit in this course a mission algorithm of service to him. So John, what about never minter never minter never God help me. Never winter night one or two party play. Hmm. Party play. Maybe. Maybe. I've been thinking of lo looking for a co-host for streams, so, hmm. I need to find someone first. The problem is, I want some someone from way outside of my usual sphere. Somebody completely disconnected from my side of the internet. And, uh, it turns out finding someone like that can be difficult. What good is another war council with a cog priest who knows not Alf the joys of battle, who cut off his parts and replaced them with augments to please his all-knowing master? We'll propose again a cowardly plan unworthy of warriors, as is the custom of his brethren. Rencher's Ring, a show of impertinence, data insufficiency, so in regard to the military craft eradication methods of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Are you having another fight, gentlemen? How predictable. A woman in power armor walks into the bridge. Yes, very nice. Retinue of Savic Kalkazar. Hmm, Inquisitorial Agent. Thank you for not starting without me. Acolyte Aishara, dispatched by the Lord Inquisitor to facilitate the operation on Euphrates 2. My privilege, 
Privileges on this war council are those of an advisor. Hmm. Henrix doesn't like her. Good. A misogynist. So shall we begin our war council, or shall we rather wait for heretics to corrupt this planet completely? All right, Ishara, why are you here? The Long Inquisitor entrusted me with the task of forging an alliance between the assembled fleet and the forces of the Cognizance fleet. Once this task is complete, I am to act as an observer and a special operator. That's a little bit sus, don't you think? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, he told me to do this, and then he says another agent after me? Weird. What troops do you have? The militia forces have already been transferred to Opticon 22. All I have left in my command is a tactical unit explicitly instructed to carry out the Lord Inquisitor's special assignments. Special assignments. Hmm. So she's doing some kind of secret skullduggery, is she? There's no surprise in my heart. The Inquisition is, as always, too ashamed of its dark deeds to reveal them to honourable figures. Spitting on the floor. <laughs> All right, well, you know, somebody will have to clean that up. I see. It is about time we moved on to discussing how we intend to kill heretics. I need a complete report on the situation at the front. Hmm. Chat is suggesting Sargon and Razorfist. I feel like they are already in my sphere, though. Plus, there is no way I could get uh, Sargon or Razorfist. They are way too busy, both of them. I know that for a fact. See, what I need is, I need somebody small and unknown. That's what I need. I need to pluck somebody from the great depths of the internet and be like, Hello, you're weird. Come play video games, and they'll be confused. That's what I need. Euphrates II is a forge world. Manufactorum and Extracticums take up most of its surface. Upon corrupting them, disrupting their production algorithm, the heretics enhance their ranks with possessed mechanisms and false defective traitorous Skitari, whose protocols were disfigured with indoctrinating scrap code. Our forces have secured minor footholds on the surface, but are unable to deliver an effective blow to the headquarters operations center of the profaners in the machine cathedral at the heart of Manufactorum Sigma S13. According to the available data, it is the current location of the arch-heretic termination target, the Dark Apostle Urulon the Cruel. Oh, I know him. He has weird head. We may outnumber the enemy, but ours is a poor warband. All it has is steel calves of the Omnissiah and scantily trained serfs from across the expanse. While our foe is detestable, but nevertheless deeply putrid hearted traitors from the ranks of the word bearers, and their vessels protect the machine cathedral from orbit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's the problem. My warband is not really a warband. It's a collection of random militia tards, which is uh, not really going to help me much here, honestly. Hmm. Hmm. Why do you see the commander's front as well? Because they're going to get slaughtered, that's why. Alright, Opticon, what do you think? Our strategic analysis point towards a full-scale offensive as the optimal course of action. The losses among the troops, insignificant to personal laity, will be numerous, but will not exceed acceptable parameters. Replenishing losses, such losses will be less arduous than restoring the damage that may otherwise come from the Manifactorum. I mean, you're probably right, but throwing dudes at the problem sounds awfully Imperial Guardy of us. What about you, Thorbald? I would rain down vengeful skies upon the enemy. I would plough the land of Euphrates too with shells, shatter their defences, level the fortified towers, throw their host into disarray, and in that whirlwind of fury I would lead my glorious pack to pave a path of blood for the Cogcarls. 
But if the world builders already have ships in orbit, how the fuck are we going to carry out a planetary bombardment on it? Uh, Chemical electrical sending? Yeah, because they can't agree, basically. Hmm. They're hiding a secret, are they? Hmm. He's going to manufacture autumn is sacred of high production value. What are you hiding? Request denied. The ominous eyes mysterious procedures conducted on Euphrates II are to remain undisclosed according to the protocol vow of preservation of the hallowed from the profane. This is why in Fenris we have the priests follow the warriors, not the other way around. The priests never think about the battle ahead, only their tents and taboos, but a wolf. A wolf must think only of battle and his enemy's death, not about preserving cathedrals or counting the trophies that await him. Hmm. Choose your strategy wisely. It's not every day you get to heed the advice of a seasoned warrior, one chosen by the old father himself to bring death to the foes of Mante. You two do not get along well, do you? Read hearts like they're described with runes, the supreme glorious greatness and art of terror. This true, my brother and I grow tired of this cog priest and his naysay. For whatever reason, he thinks himself our lord. I concur with this statement. Given that the military action, sacred purgative crusade, eradication procedure takes place in a world devoted to the machine god, Unit Optagon 22 insists on his privileged status in the matter of strategy selection. Ninety-four percent. I like my odds. There we go. Like you, bitches. There are heretics down there. Stop sulking like little women and get to it. Okay, well at least that has suitably slapped their wrists, I guess. I shall now present my brilliant plan for the future crusade. The first step is obvious. We eliminate the machine cathedral's orbital support. But what plan to the assault strategy will you choose following the destruction of the enemy void fleet? Damn. Hmm. And I see chat is indeed set on the brother and sister fun route. All right. Well, let chat be the master, master strategists that they always think they are. Hmm. Send in all forces? That sounds expensive. Bombarding the enemy's positions, then advancing cautiously? That sounds like the most reasonable thing, but that will annoy the tech priest. And simply bombing absolutely everything is an interesting idea, but at the same time, it seems also rather silly. I feel like we've got maximum casualties, minimum casualties, and somewhere in between casualties. <laughs> Which might come into effect later, if it's going to give me multiple of these options. Two is leading with a fairly substantial margin, but I'll give it a little while longer. Only 40 odd votes, so it might still swing. Let the Astartes Astarte unleash the Woofen. They will oo aggressively at the enemy. And eventually, after having a wooed long enough, 
Perhaps the enemy will simply just die of Gringe. It could happen. It is not impossible. They could simply just all kill themselves as they hear the wooing on the horizon. I think I might. 56%? Hmm, two is only getting further ahead. Yeah, it seems like two has gotten a very solid lead at this point, so... We will begin by bombarding the enemy's positions, then advance cautiously, and we must conserve our troops. Your plan bores me. It is not space wolf way for war, but sour cowardly strategy is the limit of the Omnissiah's cog cars. So you have my approval. My pack will do all that is asked of it and stand at the vanguard of the assault. Until we meet on the field of battle, his supreme glorious greatness are out of terror. And I say the same to you, Ulfar Everlost. It is a pity your pack will not share in this glorious victory with us. And boastful Grizov talks too much about my pack. He knows where my brothers are, I can smell it. Before we dive into the carnage, summon him to your ship and let me question him. I wish to hear what he knows while he still hasn't lost his blathering tongue to the heretics. Strategy confirmed as optimal. Updating this Gitari tactical program. Transmitting this unit's general blessing authorization for offensive action. The Lord Inquisitor will be delighted at the news that some semblance of order was established in the command. I wish you luck, Rogue Trader. Oh, that's... No! No! That's not what I wanted to do! Video game! I was going to summon him from Wolfgar! No! Don't start at the quest line! Oh my god, I was just clicking on it to see what it was! <sighs> the Rotator ship took its place in the center of the attack formation. The right flank was guarded by a sacred combat vessel of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The left consisted of the combined forces gathered by the Lord Inquisitor, headed by a frigate of the Indomitable Space Wolves. The enemy deployed their ships in a wide arc and attempt to surround the squadron, but the heretic's plans was not meant to be. Thorbolt and Opticon 22 sent their detachments forward, tying up the enemy in combat and presenting the Lord Captain with the chance to deliver a blow to the very heart of the enemy positions, where the flagship, these traitors of humanity, awaited their final hour. I stand ready to serve you and the Imperium, Lord Captain. Oh boy, heavy cruiser, eh? That's... I feel like that's a bit heavier than what I have here, but sure. I mean, surely, Lord Captain. You feel confident in taking on a heavy cruiser in a frigate, right? Um... No, but... You know, thanks for asking, I guess. Annihilate them. Hmm. Would two more range give me? Fire I think it would. Right now. Wow, that bit did not even tickle his little pickle. How unfortunate. Fire the for me. launch batteries. Hum. That did not indeed even tickle his pickle. Alright, well, I mean... The time has come. I guess we're just going to get, like, right up in front of it then. Fire lances at it. That did not do deadly dick to its shields. And let's activate the Imperium Storm. I was kind of hoping that would have actually wiped out Macro one of their squadrons there, but unfortunately no such luck, eh? Leave the hull strewn across the stars. Well, that's one of them. Oh, 
Um. Are you sure that's intelligent? The void ship is now a burial pyre. Good job, AI. Good job. Truly. Astoundingly good job. Truly, truly wonderful. Wow, even that did absolutely nothing. That is what we call a problem, isn't it? Yes, kind of is. And his point of weakness is behind it. This I can hardly down. see because it's so fucking tiny. Fire the lance batteries. This, I have a sneaking suspicion, is going to be a very long fight. Um, hmm. See, this is a problem. Because I'm going to have to move through that, and I'm going to basically need to kill myself to move through that, unless... Can this maybe... No. That does not shoot at those. Well, that is unfortunate Macro in the extreme. Volley. All right, let's see how much damage I take. Uh, okay, not as bad as I was fearing. I wish I could warp shift it, because I feel like if I warp shifted it right now, it would be very sad. Stuck in the middle of its own dumbass little storms. Ow, ow. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, see, I'm I'm pretty sure that in just a straight up gun duel with this thing, I stand absolutely no chance whatsoever, actually. The shields are down! Yeah, what I am a uh, grand and brutal battle! I'm pretty sure that I am simply just not leveled up for this place, which is mildly I annoying because I really salva. do hate ab arbitrary fucking level gates, but uh this looks to Fire be about right as now. large and an arbitrary a level gate as I have ever seen in my life. Bleed them! I can't even really damage this thing. And he keeps spawning stuff right in front of me, which is unfortunate. I can't turn hard enough to really get any use out of that. Macro cannons, volley! Miss. Ah, of course, it's immune to its own hazards, because I guess the developer realized that the AI would be too stupid to be able to avoid its own hazards, and yeah. Yeah, there is, there's no, uh, god damn it, and arbitrary fucking level gates, fun and engaging gameplay, fun and engaging gameplay. All right, is there anything I can, um, let's see, what have I got? I'm fully leveled up, so it's not that. I didn't have a shield master there for some reason, which is a bit dumb. Best shield master I have is you. All right, let's get him over there. Let's see, is there any... Can I maybe get some more weaponry? Let's see, Imperial Navy. I have to go to the bridge to do that, don't I? Okay, well, deal with that first. There you go. All the first plants are completely useless. I can level up the hull once, and I might as well. Level up the ram. Actually, ramming it might not be the worst idea.
Let's see. Well, I do have some new fancy stuff. Let's hope it's fancy enough. All right, I could also try... No, I could not. 77, 85. Oh boy, that is expensive, sir. My God. All right, um, the time data, ground life percent hit chance and 20% critical chance. That is better. Arctic macro battery, four shots dealing 27 damage per shot. That is definitely better. I wish I had two of them, but oh well. Uh, long range plasma micro cannons with three shots dealing 30 damage per shot. That's well, better than the basic shit I have. Uh, Griffin Pattern Torpedoes. Fire five melted torpedoes with 27 damage. That is an upgrade. Nineteen damage. And the rest is kind of garbage, so we'll add that to cargo. All right, is that enough? Hmm, maybe. It's worth a try. You never allow me to save the game, do you? Right, send them to the bridge. Right, let's see. Do I remember the conversation here? Yeah, more or less. Blah, blah. Let's commence the War Council. Uninvited visitor. Curiosity peaked. Heard opinions. You two don't get along. Persuasion. Success. Nice. Castle shows you. We'll see. Uh, present you the plan. Two. One, 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 one. And dialogue. And this time, we save. Actually, I can save on the map, as I am presuming. First, let me check. Uvugar. Ah, oh, there you are, Uvugar. Let us raise our There we go. Form Troll was invited to board the ship. I thank you, Ed Fatter. Thorbald Ironhide is here. Why have you summoned me, rogue trader? Speak to me. Know you, Thorbald, whither the path of battle has led my pack, the baleful howl. You haven't lost your pack, have you? Ever lost? Why do you call Ulfa ever lost? You do not know? I am not surprised. Brother Ulfa does not care for the moniker. He has had it since his early years in the chapter, when Ulfa underwent his trial of the Cup of the Wolfen. He took so much longer than the others that the Rune Priest gave him up, gave him up for lost. 
Later, he received grievous wounds and rays that sent him into stasis sleep for a long time. Any time we would pay a visit to the baleful howl, we would ask, Where is Brother Ulfar? And he was always away resting. And recently went missing altogether, lost after an attack on Xenos. And forgot, forget not to tell of the dire curse that of yore was laid upon the mighty Ulfar. No good death for him is fated, only to one day be lost, bereft of glory and honour. Any who cross his path, let him regale, and gladly, that proud warrior Halbrand Blatherskit, singer of rumours and fine tattler of tall tales, for he has glimpsed no worthy deeds in his short life. Do you know what Ulfar's pack is now? Feasting with the old father in the Hall of Heroes, I reckon, with Mjord filling the horns of the brim as valour and loyalty did fill their hearts. Lies! Did you see their bodies? Which of the brothers will avow the truth of these words? Ironhide never lies. And you, ever lost, watch your tongue unless you want my dagger to deliver a penance of eternal silence upon you. No, we did not see their bodies, but we heard their ranting and raving, which can only lead to the jaws of Mordecai. I would like to know the details. In the battle in which you, ever lost, Arnulf and Skjardi were captured by the Xenos, the baleful howl took prisoners of their own. And... Under torture, the captive Xenos gave up the star coordinates of what were they, where, what they, where they were to go to next. Some important meeting, it seems. The place was far away, deep in the uncharted regions where the servants of the old father have never ventured. And your brothers decided to go there. No navigator would dare lead them to those dark places, so your brothers seized a trading boat and voyaged there without a helmsman. Well, that does indeed sound more than mildly retarded, if I am to be entirely honest. So you abandon them to their grueling march? Lower your hackles. I urge them not to throw away their lives in vain. Nothing but death could await them amongst those malevolent stars. We all came here to serve the All-Father and repay our blood debt, not to die for naught. Or have you forgotten that, ever lost? Yeah, I gotta admit, wandering off without a helmsman sounds rather retarded. I will not test our friendship, Aetvater. I know that if I call upon you to go with me in search of my pack, I will be taking you away from the important battles and the saving of your home. So I will go alone to seek my brothers, but I will not abandon you in your hour of need. I owe you. When we have defeated your enemies, I will leave you and follow their trail. The trail is bloody and has long since gone cold, Brother Ulfar. There's no need to add another body to its tally. As the leader of the Stormbiters, I call you to our pack. Be a brother to us now. Have you lost your mind, Thorwald? Perhaps it is you who have lost his mind. And if you are daring to speak so insolently to Ironhide. Ironhide? He was a Transformers. Why do you not want to join the pack? He is our brother. He should not be left to wander the galaxy in the company of ordinary mortals or alone. Wolves are like sharp knives. We hone ourselves against each other, and with our brothers, Ulfar will rush, rust and grow dull. Be with us, Ulfar. We will take you in. Go to hell, Thorbald. They'll take you in there. Hmm. What makes you so certain they are dead? Well, they've wandered off into space without a navigator, so... If they're not dead, they'll start, to, they'll start to death eventually. When the baleful howl was setting off, we exchanged gifts. Our pack runes, every tenth watch, a priest cast the runes and saw what fate they revealed. Fifty watches after the baleful howl left, the runes showed calamity. Sixty watches after the left, death. Since then, the runes have been voiceless and their patterns hold no meaning. And that's it. The spirits deceive you. Your priest went a little soft in the head and forgot how to read his runes. And for that you give my pack up for dead? Cowards. The runes do not lie, Ulfar. You know this. I am sorry about your brothers, but their fate is clear. Ulfar is light. Right, he is loyal to his brothers. Plus, I like having him here because he is very overpowered. Stay out of wolf business, rogue trader. I will not reveal the coordinates of the power place to which your brothers travelled. Respect your alpha, Ulfar. That is an order. You are too quick to call yourselves my leader, Thorbald. Go and bark commands at your pups. Who are you calling a pup, Avalost? 
Unlike your pathetic pack, we will soon go into battle and accomplish great deeds. But you, coward that you are, want to shirk your duty. Ah. Sure, kill each other. Have fun. A duel is a fine thing. Quiet, both of you. Have you forgotten where you are? Holmgang can only take place on solid ground, not on a boat. The void and the warp are treacherous and unfit to host a duel of the worthy. And secondly, I am your superior, Ulfar, and so I am not asking but ordering you back to your chest beating with deeds. If the baleful howl pack is alive, as you say, let it march with the storm biters in the assault on Euphrates too. Let it display the valor of all stories tell of. Will you stand alone for all your brothers, or have you gone soft? Hmm. We'll see about that. I'll prove that the storm fighters will never be a match for the baleful howl, Aktvata. I must be at your side when you depart for the assault. Promise that you will grant me this honor. Okay, you will go. That's fine. Right. Well, Ugar. I am sorry to say that uh, we will not be leading the assault. We will instead be leaving this place and going somewhere to grind for a bit. Don't worry, Ugar. It'll only be... I don't know how many months, but it'll be a while. Right, what else do I've got? Maragdus Mundus. Smaragdus Mundus. Very well. Hopefully there'll be some scrap there. With a little bit of luck, maybe a void battle or two so I can level up some more. Yeah, I've got out loads of points. Why not? Oh, boy. For one who isn't here, you claim that you left the Sanctum Navis on Lady Noga's orders. Our formation, this unit affected in accordance with maintenance protocol. Step one, sense the secret mechanicans for the to 50 current return. Step two... You failed to inform the bridge about the imminent jump. I want to know why. Data unavailable. The Navy Navigator ordered that she be connected to the void ship, but she did not order the preparations of the machine spirit for warp translation. Cause, a ritual that cannot be identified by this unit's capabilities. This unit received the command to interrupt protocol TRN 08353 and ex exit the Sanctum Navis. Oh, please, not the fingers. Enforcer, I'm going to break one for every word of a lie I hear coming out of your mouth. Now talk. Please, you have to believe me. All we did was prepare the canvas and mix the Navy Navigator's nah, la, 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 la. Navy Navigator's blood, English, blood into the paint. Then we were told to lock open the shutters so that the Lord Captain could see everything that was going on inside the Sanctum Navis from the obs observation chamber. Uh, grok shit, armor glass can't shield you from warp horrors. I swear to my soul, the Golden Throne, Mass Enforcer, Lady Ever Navigator only want to paint a picture for a ritual or some such. That's all I know. She wasn't going to use the powers and I, but I still get as far away from here as I could. That's all I saw, I'm telling you. Oh boy, that is quite the little image you've made there, Sir Cinnamon Bun. You're, uh, you're looking a bit... A bit worse for wear, actually. We performed an emergency warp jump, barely activated the guild field in time, and are now being dragged to throw nosewear by an unknown force. The Lady Navigator and the Lord Captain are still unaccounted for. Now tell me one more time what transpired in the Sanctum Navis. I escorted the Lord Captain to the observation chamber and he yelled at the servants for leaving the shutters open, but then I was told he was on the road to his orders. We could see the Lady, lady Navigator clearly through the armor glass. She was lost in thought, staring at the canvas in front of her. She looked like she was completely unaware of the world around her. Soon the servants were ordered to leave the Sanctum Navis and the Lady Navigator picked up her brush entranced she started dragging it across the canvas, painting one image over another, and another one over the last, and another. And then the Lord Captain noticed it. There was a thing on the other. Crawled out to Lady Cassie. Yeah, shout at her through the armor grass. Why not? 
Startled by the Lord Captain's cry, the Lady Navigator answered. That's when I realized it. The armor glass between us and the Sanctus Navis was gone, and the thing in the painting broke free. Okay, yeah, that's a problem. And what happened next? I barely remember a thing. There was a bright flash of purple blur. I remember feeling so scared that my knees were shaking. I remember my legs carrying me away like they had a mind of their own. As I ran, I heard screams behind me. The Lord Captain and Lady Cassia, they... Oh God, Emperor, the creatures, they pulled them both inside the painting. Ah, it's that Oblivion quest. Mistress Voxmaster, I have a report that needs to be delivered to the senior officers. The Lord Captain and the Lady Navigator were lost during the emergency warp jump. Their whereabouts are still unknown. I'm sending you the interrogation reports end of recording. Uh, Tisiphon, or cellular ritual did not go as planned. The warp disturbance, triggered by the Lady Navigator's trance, washed over the Sanctum Navis. The Voyager Machine Spirit reacted to the surge of the Immaterium and interpreted it as a call to action. Thus did the emergency jump into the unknown begin. Amidst the shrieks of silence, the clang of shutters, and the distant hum of the warp engine, some unknown will pulled the Lord Captain into the Sanctum Navis, toward the creatures from the living canvas that had already gripped the, gripped the Lady Navigator's throat. Horrified, almost out of breath and struggling to scream, Cassius stretched out her hand and began slowly sinking into her own painting. The Lord Captain... Uh, Direct from the forward, started hacking at the hands, reaching from inside the painting, grab lady name of hand to try to pull her back. I mean, Ulfar's pretty strong, so let's try pulling her back. Lord Captain pulled the Lady Navigator closer. After a while, the creatures eased their onslaught and Cassia crashed into the Lord Captain, knocking him off his feet. The Lord Captain felt a sharp pain in his side as Cassia's cogitor brush pierced his flesh during the fall. She does keep stabbing me awfully often. A moment later, Cassia was sucked into the air and pulled inside the canvas. Instant later, the... But what did I bother with dragging her away from then? In the the Rotrad himself was plunged in the depths of the world the Lady Navigator had created. His supreme glory of greatness and after terror awoke, finding himself in the middle of a gigantic, boundless, billowing nothingness. His body felt weightless, floating in a void strewn with hundreds of the Lady Navigator's colours, some of them bright, warm and alluring, others morose, cold and heavy. Ah, uh, bright colours? <laughs> Spirium Gloria's greatness and out of terror plunged into a river of bright hues, and flashes of rosy sunset and lilac carried him down the dazzling stream. Before long, the Lord Captain was standing in an idyllic garden permeated with the fragrance of flowers and the singing of birds. Servants in purple livery darted back and forth, attending to a withered old woman in a navigator's mask. Sitting on her lap and smiling coyly to everyone was a little girl with ruby eyes and white hair. Be a good little girl, my child, until the day we meet again. With trembling hands, the woman handed the girl to a navigator in laboratory attire. I am out of time. Prepare the child for the Atlas transfer and destroy all records and mentions of the world of ir -TV. None must learn of what were that which took place here. And remember, her body must grow strong for it is to accept my power. And once I have returned, loyalty will be rewarded. Cassia is a, a, um, oh, what's the word? A resurrection vessel, is she? Hmm. The memory dissipated, and a gust of silver wind hurled the Lord Captain back into the ocean of nothingness. But this time, the nothingness felt dismal. Instead of bright hues, all it contained was shadow of, of invisible monsters swimming by, shrouded by a nebulous veil of unfathomableness. Alright, swim towards the darkness. Greyish blue waves swallowed the Lord Captain, and the feeling of lightness disappeared as his limbs grew heavy again. His supreme glorious greatness and art of terror fell on the hard floor of a laboratory cluttered with vats as tall as a human. Inside them were dozens, hundreds even, of repulsive mutants. Some had no arms, or no legs, or two heads, or no face. Or their innards turned hiccups inside out. But each had white skin, white hair, long clawed limbs, and ruby eyes. My lady, the child. The child is born. The tall old woman slowly approached one of the vats. Readings? Stable. Mutations? None were detected at any of the stages. Genes? Identical, my lady. Hmm. 
Chances of survival. A hundred times higher than any of the previous experiments. How long will it take to grow this child? A fear accelerating the process might cause the body to fail. The only one after years of... Silence. I understand the situation. Natural growth. I do not have that much time. We will have to go with the backup plan. Yes, Novator, it will be done. The memory dissipated, and a gust of silvery wind hurled the Lord Captain back into the ocean of nothingness. But this time, the nothingness felt dismal. Instead of bright hues, all it contained was shadows of invisible monsters swimming by. Well, only one option remaining. His supreme glorious greatness, an art of terror, stayed in the ocean of nothingness, devoid of any sensation or emotion, until a slight smile upon someone's lips surfaced in his mind. The warmth of her skin, the silk of her snow-white hair. Cassia. She was there, somewhere amidst the seething nothingness all alone. Mmm, smelling of cinnamon. Someone's scream broke the delicate equilibrium of the Lord Captain's motionless body, and the weightlessness released him. He plummeted into the maroon abyss of roiling illusions, but was now in full control of his own body. Then his supreme glorious retinue, Sir of Terror, descended into the abyss towards the screams. The Lord Captain crashed from the immeasurable heights to the bottom of the roiling abyss. In the next moment, his supreme glorious greatness, Sir Terra, saw two figures amidst the billowing maroon moist mist. One of the figures, unnaturally gaunt and tall, was clutching the other, smaller one in his claws, screaming furiously. Awareness minus 90. Oh, nice. Hey! In this world of Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson, economic human faces, stricken with torment, not just human faces, there were Xenos, Eldari, the features fused together with those of humans, which made the Crimson Spectre look all the more abominable. Their gazes and their rage were directed at the two unmoving figures facing each other. One step was all it took for some unknown force to notice the Lord Captain. Seize him and drag him through the painting's twisted space. Now the Lord Captain could clearly see the dark shade of the long-dead navigator leaning over Cassia, clutching her neck in his clawed fingers. The shade screamed. You were given life because of me. You survived because of me, and here you are now because I have willed it so. Bow before me, tell me what I wish to hear, and your suffering will end. Go on, child. I have waited for so long. Submit to me. That is Tissia, then. Cassia looked exhausted. Her body covered in hundreds of thin cuts, her lips laps, lacerated claws marks on her cheeks. Yet there was a steadfast resolve in her eyes. I know who you are, Tisiphon or Salio. I know what you crave. I saw it in the vision that you sent me again and again. I won't allow you. I will never allow you to become me. Cassia's fatigued voice quivered, but she was ab not about to yield in this battle. Agility? Ah, zero percent. Persuasion. <laughs> Listen, what you're doing here is mighty gay. Seize at once. The Lord Captain's words attracted not just Lady Cassia's attention. Tisiphone Orselio, finally noticing the presence of a living creature in that bizarre world, turned to face the interloper and lunged forward, seething with rage. Seething, coping, you might say. When the Antony's claws were millimetres from the rogue trader's throat, Cassia opened her navigator's eye and a wave of unbridled warp energy obliterated Tisiphone's spectre before she realised what was happening. The Lady Navigator graced the Lord Captain with a tired smile. The abortive ritual had turned out to be a trap set for Lady Cassia by the previous novator of her house. But the Rogue Trader had ensured that her plan fell to ruin, and now it was time to desert that accursed place. Cassia took the Rogue Trader's hand and guided him through the maroon mist and out of the painting. Their unconscious bodies were discovered in the Sanctum Navis twenty talent days after their disappearance, as soon as the Rogue Trader's voice ship had emerged from the warp in an unknown system. Well, that was action-packed. Ah, purple sun. That usually bodes well. I was about to say, I think setting up an extractorum here would actually be rather pointless. Thing is, I don't know where the fuck I am. Ah, yes, let's do some administrative stupidity whilst we're here. An incredible find has been made on Foulstone, Lord Captain. Lost volume of St. Keith's Lost Diary has been found during the restoration of his crypt. 
According to his records, the member of the Order of the Hammer were able to find the crypto ark containing a relic of St. Cornatius, the Crucible. Kiefer's writings on it are vague. It is called the Sculptor and Transformer, granting life and grace. The explorators have sent a delegation claiming the treasure. The heated dispute has been going on for many days. Now what say you? It is likely that the research contained in the ancient treaties and archival repository of the Adeptus Mechanicus will provide factual information on similar precedents. I can spare some of my computing power to find such a case and provide my brother and sister with the information that is necessary to win this dispute. I believe that the chronicles of the- Oh, never mind, never mind. Cinnamon Bun has spoken. Cinnamon Bun gets her way. What? Oh yeah, Cinnamon Bun. Cinnamon Bun gets her way. Now I feel uneasy at the thought that I have become the mastermind of this deceit. Don't worry about it. Cinnamon Bun gets away. I care not for the consequences. None of that matters. Cinnamon Bun wants it. Cinnamon Bun gets it. Simple dimples. Uh, provisions, complacency, profit factor. 5,000 Imperial Navy is nice, but I need profit factor right now, so... Profit factor and provisions, it is. Um, sure. Lots of efficiency bonuses. Kiawagama. Hmm. That one, I suppose. Weeaboo. Floggerston is getting a bit low. In fact, I'll use up most of it. Plasteel and Adamantine. Which I don't need as much. Prometheum... Eh, 12 more Prometheum. Your Lordship, Yannis is reporting about a disaster. Ghostly Xenos figures that appear at dusk and go away at dawn. In a ravenous swarm, they attack one agricultural facility each night, freezing everything they touch. The attack takes place in the complexes closest to the uncontrolled sector of the planet, where nature herself has turned against us. Fortunately, not too many facilities were damaged, or irre irreconcilably struggle has moved to borders of the affected sector. The important production lines have survived. Well, you told me it wouldn't move, and now it's moved. Well, destroy it then. Arming themselves and inflaming the spirits with rotgut, squads of agricultural facility, various rulers gathered to fight the incorporeal Xenos. Alas, conventional weapons proved to be wholly powerless against spirits, but it seems that the plethora of dying people had caused such a strong psychic resonance that many of the wraiths disappeared or retreated. The race did not disappear completely after the battle. They start to appear less often and avoid human settlements. They got sick of the humans dying at them. Good for them. Ooh. Ten percent damage with plasma and multi weapons. I will take that. Oh god, more events. Stop it! I am no, I don't want to deal with any more of your fucking random pop-ups. Okay, Argenta, you get your way. I don't even know what's happening here. Mm. There you go, Argenta. I was just looking for the contract screen. That's all. Uh, people for provisions. Ah, people for provisions. I. Okay. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Xenotech. Chemicals for Prasteel. Definitely not. All right. Sujard says, Snow Rui, president and CFO of Hooded Horse, was roofied at GDC. Terry McTee published at GDC, and local police didn't care. Must be super common. What?
Really? Seriously? Is that a thing? Okay, it's had a lot of snow. Really? Okay, so she does work for Red Horns. GD. <laughs> what the fuck? GDC. Okay. On whining at home, let's know there are other colleagues who say they're going to drink approximately one drink per hour, and some impairing and toxic energy, and shortly before going to cause you to become incoherent, like quickly trying to get rid of the room. <laughs> okay. Alrighty then. Why the fuck not? But that does sound like a general issue games developer conference. It really does. Sounds uh, sounds fairly fairly standard to me, honestly. Around games developers, never relax. Always keep your guard up. You never know what's going to happen. I won't tolerate There's a lot weakness. of male feminists there. You gotta bear that in mind. A lot of male feminists. Gotta keep your guard up. A space wolf never fails in their duty. Done. Oh, Drukari gloves. Ah. Both strong and wise is Ulfa. None shall well, stand I used in to have way. a Drukari on my team, but Chad wanted the de demons to eat him, so... Mm. You know, too bad for him. And on a second place, I'll never guess how frightening enough by the powers it is. Last bit went left three from the Sethel Clan without a shred of reason. Okay. I'll lay claim to the stars. So, uh... Whatever turned her into a wraith apparently had some pretty nasty effects on the local scenery as well. There you go, buddy. A big old sword for you. There's a lot of Eldar artifact here, and this, I mean, this Follow is clearly an Eldar planet, because it's got I wraith stones. I can see the agitation and fear of the servants beside me. But you, how do you manage to drown out their colors with mere words? Their dark hues dissolve immediately, and humility sets in. I... <clears throat> I have always desired only respect, not fear. It is good to know that my efforts have not been in vain. Thank you for telling me. So whatever House Orcelio did, it clearly had something to do with Eldar fuckery as well. The Emperor favors me today. Single plasma shot, 30 to 45 damage, 50 percent arm penetration, Nito Cheeto. To down from the red is grenades. The first time the red is grenades, I'm trying 50 percent not to expend the grade. Alright, that's cute I won't as well. Tolerate weakness. It's a very large scale Eldar settlement though. Like, really large scale. None shall stand in my Normally, way. Normally, the Eldar do not build like this. Unless this is a... Yeah, that can't be a craft world, surely. And, uh, I don't want to think about the other alternative just yet. Because the other alternative's a lot worse. The other alternative is... I'm very far from home, if the other alternative is true. And how the it's fuck... About time. Cassia isn't crying tears of blood right now. If the other alternative is true, then I don't know what. Navis bodyguard. Okay. Somehow I have a sneaking suspicion you're not necessarily friendly. Cursed child. We have to ally ourselves with the Xenos once more to stop you. 
No matter, small price to pay for the liberation of House Orselio from the chains of tyranny. <coughs> okay. Hello, who are you? Renegades! For the false idol of blind fools, what are you even on about, sir? Wait, did Tisiphone somehow manage to force herself into a soul stone? Hello, Harlequins. Damn, Xenos, this was not the bargain we struck. Throne, smite you. What's this? The road trader and the traitors of the house have lured the child into a trap set by Xenos. I wish my eyes were deceiving me, but now I can see clearly the great region Toronto was right to send us after your vessel. I, too, wish to be enlightened about what's happening here, huh? Troopmaster, you will stop defiling the remains of the hallowed ground of our ancestors with your semblance of speech, monkey. The final act will soon unfold, where you will pray for the deeds of your ancestors. Pay for the deed. It's an important way for the puppeteer to pull at your string. Hollowed ground. Now... If this is a crone world, then one, I am in lot of danger. Two, that would explain the troop masters, because they're pretty much the only ones who could exist in here. And three, again, I'm surprised that Cassie isn't, you know, crying beads of blood out of her face. Why? Why are the Xenos ruins where the Palace of the Atlas should be? Why is this place coated in an impenetrable black mist? I'm suffocating. Three-eyed monkey who sees into Shia, Shia Ael, the taint of your ancestors has begun to consume your body and soul. Pathetic fools with an insatiable lust for power that is not yours. Ending your misery will be a mercy. Taint? Do you mean the Atlas? Sinos, traitor. Silence, traitor. The Atlas is the sacred relic of House Orselio. It is what elevates us above the rest. How dare you? I refuse to accept this. Impossible. What is this place? We call it Crone World. Okay, yeah, we should all be dead right about now. Uh, we, we should all be very dead. Irulet, indeed, should be very dead right about now. She is an elf with a soul gem on a crone world. She should be very, very dead right about now. Mmm. We call planets such as this crone worlds. They come to the long before my time, back when the, all of the Aldari were a united people whose empire stretched from one edge of the galaxy to the other. It is a world beneath the first stars, an unblighted world. I never thought that I would come find one. Yeah, I mean, they're about 98% chaos at this point. I have nothing to add to the outcast words other than my eternal astonishment at your curious troop, monkey. Why shouldn't I simply kill you all where you stand? Well, probably because the Harlequin Quizzes would kill me first, but... You are Riku yet, monkey. Have patience. The denouement is night. Do not see it. When you, monkey, discovered this grown world, you tainted it with your crude so technology. Despoiled it, despoiled it of its relics. Ruined all there was to the last stone. But worst of all, you sullied the soul of our ancestors reposed in this sacred vessel, the spirit monolith. Put his fingers remarkable crystal. Like a sea of bottomless blue. I, I did not know, not know that living things could exude such saturated hues. I wish I could paint this ocean a different color. Examine the howling crystal. A giant heart has been plucked out of its owner's chest. My cloud appears by hundreds of dark veins that have taken root with it like a terrible illness. I mean, yeah, that's basically a jawbreaker for Slanesh right there. She should be sucking on that for quite some time. But eventually, she will eat everybody inside of it. Experiment. This is where she conducted the, her experiment, Tisiphone. No, it is not possible. To consort with Xenos is to violate the words of the God Emperor. It is known to all that Tisiphone or Celio executed anyone who showed any interest in the enemies of humanity. 
Is that so? Then why is it that every piece of metal or fabric in this place bears our house's coat of arms? Open your eyes. Quiet. I am unsurprised that the truth is hidden from your gaze, three-eyed monkey, who sees into Shael. I realize at the moment I met th the first of you, wretched, begging us to help you destroy your own kin. I sense it within you, our ancestors' call, their pleas, their endless torment. I knew that what you had found was a crone world, and I humbly waited for the day you would lead me to it. What is the meaning behind your words, Athir, Troopmaster? You know the answer already, outcast. You've always known. Internet. So that is why, that is why your presence makes my soul shrink to the size of a river pearl, and my throat choke in a collar of thorns. That is why your words seep into my soul like poison, leaving wounds that will not heal. There is a shard of the spirit monolith inside you, monkey, twisted, perverted, invigorating you by making my ancestors suffer. Yep. Okay, so worse, they implanted a shard of a soul stone into her. This makes very little sense, um, in general. I send you five dollars. No question about Holy Terra. Are the humans on Terra different from the Imperium, uh, since they are bathed in the Emperor's psychic power for 10,000 years? Not that I have heard of, no. Uh, and besides, he's deep beneath ground, the ground anyway, so I'd imagine it wouldn't be like radiation, I guess. I haven't heard anything about any differences. Alas, you are right, outcast. The ancestors of the three-eyed monkey sought to command the power of the spirit monolith, and yet they suffered failure time and again. Eventually, they discovered a way to harness this power. A terrible way, torturous and unforgivable. They shattered the monolith into many shards and weakened the soul within. And then... Then they placed the shards of the spirit monolith inside their bodies to empower their abilities. I never wish to learn such a harsh truth about my own house. Mm, there's no shame in using Xena's power for the good of the Imperium. My whole life I've been thought to honor the Emperor and his light that illuminates our way into the darkness of the Sea of Souls. Place of horror and torment, I've been told that all heresy must be eradicated, at least it weeds spread deep inside the human soul. I am one such weed, Lord Captain, and so is all of House Orselio. You, you are more than just a tyrant's heir, you are a successor to a mad heretic, a betrayer of the faith. You must be destroyed, you and the Atlas, once and for all. Oh my god, help me, I've been reading for two hours. Game, shut up and let me kill something, holy fuck. My god! Oh, the density of the text today! Oh, Jesus, I am breaking. Slowly but surely. You think the solution is so easy, don't you, monkey? When you die, your souls become captive inside the spirit monolith. This process is deranging to your deranging to who have served as the monolith guardians for eons. It is equally agonizing to the souls of your dead. And the monkey souls the monolith absorbs, the more volatile it becomes. The Alteria and the monkey have spent many a dance battling for supremacy within the monolith, and its integrity is waning. You sense it too. The only way to free your ancestors from the pain is to separate them. Can I just kill them? Can is there an option to just open fire? There isn't, of course not. My troop is here to perform just that. We will all play our parts today, and when the final act of this age-long tragedy begins, the monkey players will exit the world stage. Okay, Cassia, what do you feel about all this? I cannot change the past, it is true. Nor can I change the fact that my house is forever tainted with d the disgrace of Tisiphine Orselio's hubris. Yet all of us here today have the power to change the future and halt the unending suffering that is drawing both your kin and mine. You... You suggest that the monkey and the Eldari change the future together? I must admit, my leading lady, I am confounded by your audacity. Go on. My Atlas. If you can free the phantom of my house from the spirit monolith, guide them to enter my atlas, their experience and wisdom will help steer House Orselio onto the path of truth, and allow further generations to avoid the calamitous pitfalls of their forebearers. Okay, Morag. My leading lady, the shards of the monolith are lodged inside the chest of every monkey bound to you by ties of blood. How exactly do you intend to return to them? 
I shall use the atlas to sever my subject's connections to the spirit monoliths, and then I shall extract a chart from every navigator of House of Celio. This artifact is implanted at birth, but that does not mean the ritual cannot be reversed. I witnessed its creation through Tisiphone's eye in my vision. I lived it over and over and over again, through the memories of the Sasala clan. I, I can recreate the ritual that will return the souls of your kin to you and save my people's lives. Whatever you say, Cinnamon Bun. I am willing to try, monkey. That's surprisingly reasonable from an Eldar. No, so I won't let you destroy the Atlas, yeah. even if it is the child's wish. Lady Ocelia, you are too young and experienced. You simply cannot comprehend. You address the future novator of the House Ocelia, one who survived the massacre of Eurus V, who has lived following an attempt on her life at the Palace of Dargonus, who has resorted to her, her house, who has restored her house's stability in what scant time she has been free, while you, all of you, have spent years destroying it from within. You address one who has passed through the tempers of the Sea of Souls, the true Atlas, as a rogue trader's ally. It's still you call me unworthy, don't you? Young, inexperienced? Kneel before me, and I shall forgive you your insolence. House Ocelia was always loyal to Novator Tisiphone. Henceforth, they will be loyal to a successor, even if you see fit to lead us down a different path, my lady. Are you done with your performance, monkey? Then stand aside and do not interrupt. Ah, I can feel it again, the tranquility. The ancestral souls have found peace and corruption no longer endangers the monolith or this world. Oh, it does. Oh, it absolutely does. There is no such thing as a safe crone world. Remember our agreement, Cassio Celio. We'll soon meet in this place again so that you can give us the shards. And now, be gone from our world, monkey. Alright, sure, but let me at least loot them first. Thank you. I'll lay claim to the stars. A trivial task. Watch your steps. Oh, too hard for a simple monkey. Oh, nice. Victory awaits. My success was inevitable. Oh, boy. That did look like a kind of cute stuff. But does it give me any bonuses? It does. 20 willpower. I will take it. That's probably the literal first weapon upgrade and the she has had this entire fucking video game. Not a good, lot of good uh, navigator staffs out there, as it turns out. Sandoom also says, I asked, I asked because I remember hearing a law bit that Dean Steeler got in terror that's struggling to mind control the humans for unknown reasons. I mean, it's kind of retarded that Dean Steeler's got on a terror to begin with, in my opinion. I'm pretty sure the Emperor would have sensed that and, you know, maybe told somebody. It's like, hey, maybe you should uh, check the sewers. I have a weird feeling, a weird sensation coming over me from the sewers down there. Very, very strange one. Forgotten Twins star system. I half feel like it would be quicker and easier to actually just make a custom route, but if I make these safe, that will cost me three, which is the cost of an entire route, and then I'll have two unsafes, which is not the worst thing in the universe.
When skilled dynasty, outpost hails the supreme glory of greatness and arch of terror. The fond Valencius and thanks him for the help. The local and to him. Glory to the rogue trader. What? What? Is is that why I came down here? Visit the Forgotten Twin Star System. Excuse moi. All right. Planetoid. Nope. Gas giant. Nope. Dead world. I am confused as to why the video game asked me to come here. Okay. I guess it's an old quest that never got completed for reasons. All right, sure. That means that's the only thing left, isn't it? Oh boy. Oh boy, indeed. Right, well, let's hope I got enough new gear and stuff to deal with, uh... To deal with the enemy cruiser. Anything else I can get? Lightbringer for all colonies, that's good. Complacency for all colonies, profit factor plus five, that's better. Lord Captain, the Orozinas Punitive Unit, led by Acolyte Linnet Zuas Ravnianus, think was in force of all taken from the governor's palace and intended to deal with the anomalies on Yarnix. I mean, go ahead, I guess. Let think was do their job. Uh, and for the all of us are feeling guilty for their crimes, but the Emperor could only stay silent and pray. During an investigation, Lady Shu has been able to establish the genetic changes in the organisms of the cyclic creatures have been caused by the effect of mysterious substances secreted into the water by the Xeno obelisks. These substances did not contaminate the water until recently, as shown by the analysis of Magos biologists. The same Xeno obelisk appears to be linked by a chain of energy communications, also serving as a source of unknown radiation that seems to have caused the outbreak of contaminated growth in the current uncontrolled sector of the planets. This also seems to be causing the appearance of the mysterious phantoms. The issue suggests that there is some sort of ancient mechanical construct located on Yanis that has awakened from its slumber. The anomalies occurring on Yanis have been caused by the blasphemous machine trying to start itself. Probably. Now go fix it. Pleasure world. Yes. I like the idea of pleasure world. I like the idea of pleasure world. Profit factor. Give me more profit factor. Hmm. I wonder. 
I'm gonna check out where the uh, hell Argenta's quest is actually. I feel like I've explored the entire universe now. Hmm, is there a place this place it is? Place it is. Uh, Tony Mirror Footfalls. Where is the planet? There's the planet. Hmm. Ah, I haven't triggered it yet. It's further down in the, the plot line. Okay, fair enough. I was wondering if I'd somehow managed to miss it by not finding her planet, but no, I do have to just go and do the next main quest. Fair enough, fair enough. Even if I don't necessarily want to. Yay, okay. Now... Let's see what I can get from the... Imperial Navy. Loading. 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 Imperial Navy. Give stuff, weapons, things. Thank you. Here, have trophies. Uh, That amounted to basically nothing. Hmm. I don't think any of this is going to amount to any Imperial cargo either, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yep, okay, so 10 is about as good as I get, but that does give me some new things. Right, Void Sunder Lance Battery, dealing 91 to 105 damage. That is quite a bit more than what I've got, yes. And that is certain speed long with strong acceleration and braking with low. Okay, so that's speed. And 12 points damage, 5 points damage, forward and aft. Alright. Okay, that just gives me some straight flat upgrades, which will hopefully be enough. And Cassia, I imagine you're feeling a little bit... Uh, <laughs> How nice of you oh, to happy. grace me with your presence. I was just thinking back to our journey to the Palace of the Atlas. That is, to the world of Xenos. <laughs> Remembering that most reckless act has enveloped my mind in a whole palette of hues. But when I think of the great risk you took for House Orcelios and my own sake, an azure shawl instantly descends on my shoulders and amber sparks flash inside my soul. Please accept my sincerest gratitude. So now you are the full-fledged novator of House Ocelio. You of all people should know that succession is a lengthy and tiresome process. 
while my entire house is busy preparing for a grand council at which I am to ceremonially inherit the late Tisiphone's title, I have decided to remain by your side, to relish just a little more of this carefree liberty. For as soon as I am summoned to do my duty, we must say our farewells. I don't know about that. I think I'll chain you up still. What awaits the navigators of your house now? The Xenos have managed to free the souls of our ancestors from their confinement. The memory and wisdom of those that came before us will serve our house, helping build upon the ruins of the present a firm foundation for generations to come. I believe in that, as I believe in the divine light of the Emperor. So now the entire power of the Atlas is in the Novator's hands? I suppose so. If by power you mean priceless knowledge. As for the special powers granted by the Xenos souls, the navigators of House Orcelio will once again have to contend with their own bodily and spiritual limitations. However, I am undaunted by the prospect, for our line and our gene have never been weak. House Orcelio will succeed, and soon we will rise again, draped in white and gold. Of course. I will try to answer any questions you have. I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. Alrighty then. What about Argenta? Anything new? Greetings. Nope. <laughs> Greetings. Goodbye. Right, let's have another go at this void battle then, shall we? And I should probably scan these, otherwise I will forget about them. Nope, I do not want one Plasteel for an Extractorum. That is an incredibly bad trade. And two is not much better. Save. All right, have better gun now. Hopefully, better gun will produce better result. And if my escort frigate can maybe choose to not instantaneously yeet itself, that might also be useful. Who knows? It is inconceivable. For the glory of the dynasty. Don't put... Ah, uh, yep, there we go. It's about to say, don't put little purple clouds over there because my ship is going to ram itself into them and kill itself immediately. Alright. Uh, where did that weak point... Emerge? I can't actually tell because the damn thing is too large. Ah, there it is. Well, that does not help me much at all. In fact, it helps me not in the slightest, really. Hmm. Unless... Annihilate torpedoes them. in the warp. Um... Set the course. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Video game. I was pretty sure you told me you would turn Fire slightly right more now. than that. Why did you elect to stop there? It's like, because video game? Uh, retarded. Yes. That is fucking true, isn't it? This one's going down. Fire the lance batteries. Okay, well, I mean, pain? Good. Pain, good. Onward. 
Uh, my ass facing that direction less good. Let us strengthen asswood shields and fire a thing. So a class frigate attempts to kill itself. But this time at least it does do a little bit of damage before it commits seppuku, which is nice. And it even absorbs a little bit of damage. Good, good little sword class frigate. My ass was indeed lavish with great attention. to turn in on it this coming turn possibly no no it does not all right well start that thing that seems to be my most effective ability right now This does not have as much... This one's oh, never mind. Down. Actually, it's quite a lot of range. Okay. Boost range by two. And shoot. Alright. This is working out a There's lot a better. In the enemy shield. A lot better. Yes. Yes. Right, and now my frigate is... No, it's not going to kill itself. Ah, okay. It was facing the other way. Good. I thought it was facing that way, in which case it would immediately head straight through all of the purple cloud and die. Yes, yes. That's a good place for you to sit. Nice, big, and fat, and dumb. This thing better give me a lot of scrap, I swear to God. Cowabunga! Uh... Did that do damage, or did they just disappear when they hit its hull or something? I feel like that might just have disappeared. Fire the last batteries! Okay, well that is unfortunate, but it might uh, it doesn't matter. No mercy for the enemies of humanity. There you go. Just had to unlock some more weaponry. And yes, incidentally, chat, firing Another macro batteries at fighters is very, very retarded, but since the video game doesn't have anything like you know the course. flak Macro cannons is uh, is what we macro use for point defense. Falling. This is a very good ability. No one can outmaneuver House or Celio. 134 scrap. Well, it's something. A general once said that all wars are fundamentally the same. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. Grox shit. A general has not witnessed the events of Euphrates too, And no, yeah, that is actually absolute, complete, and utter bullshit, because war changes quite rapidly. In fact, the entire thing... Whoa, war never changed. No, no, war changes fucking constantly. Throughout human history, practically every single major conflict has been different in some significant way, but details, details. 
Rogue Trader, his supreme glorious greatness, Sir Art of Terror, Font Valencius, was the supreme commander in that battle. A man of iron will, unfaltering, unshakable. I served in his personal enforcer guard back then. Just another cocky kid who thought he was an expert soldier. The Emperor was gracious to me. He gave me a chance to realize just how wrong I was. Most of my comrades didn't get a chance like that. The shuttles would have blocked out the sun if one could see it through the smoke of the Manufactorum city of Sigma S-13. At his heart stood the Machine Cathedral, a primary objective. The Lord Captain showed us mercy by having the landing zone bombarded from orbit. All the shuttles carrying troops, and more importantly, precious vehicles, reached their destination. Daunted by our numbers, the enemy withdrew. That was the perfect moment for a decisive attack. With an armoured vehicle force of this size, we had the upper hand. Upon descending from orbit, Sister Argenta inspired the troops with the very first notes of her prayers. Her singing was the Emperor's voice, commanding us to fight without any regards for our own lives. After rousing the soldiers to launch a daring raid, she quickly captured one of the heretic's commanders. That was when we heard a starkly different voice from the Sister of Battle. Trembling with fury, she personally interrogated the miscreant, pulling one poised confession after another out of him. Once she was done, the world was purged in his impure breath and she was the one wielding the flamer. The sight of that heretic withering flame, flames was imprinted upon our memories, shining a light on the cruel darkness of our immediate future like a brilliant beacon. In the command center, the Lord Captain ordered his generals to avert their, their soft and general, our generous eyes away from our gentas. Cruel and unusual ministrations. Don't worry, generals, I have her on a relatively tight leash. Just don't say anything weird around her, I'm sure you won't be... You know, treated equally. <laughs> Advance while using the surviving planetary population as a human shield. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot, but uh, I think a rapid tank assault is probably more preferable. You know, generally speaking, generally speaking. Unless we are to adopt the South Parkian wave or way of just tying black people to our tanks, that is. You know, we could play the South Park RPGs together. I wonder if those are monetizable. Somehow I... Somehow I doubt it. Launch the tanks forward. Our negligible losses during the landing stage allowed us to have enough armoured vehicles for a decisive push against the enemy's positions. We began our advance. I will never forget the roar of the tank kits treads treading the heretic's infantry to pieces. Accompanied by the shrieks of las guns and the rumble of heavy artillery, the deafening symphony of war. Nothing could stop us. We marched in the wake of a column of armoured beasts. Not turning to look at the mushroom clouds climbing over piles of any bodies and those of our own, we had our orders. Pushing through the ruins of our sacred of sacred workshops, we looked with awe upon machines that have, up until that point had remained forbidden to the eyes of the laity. Those were places of incredible and frightening technology. Void ship assembly halls, alchemical atriums, sacred arsenals, generators producing invisible fields unsettling to the mind, and scriptorums containing knowledge of horrors best left undiscovered. One of the chemical... Cap chapels, we came upon a shipment of cisterns containing hallucinogenic gas. The tech priest protested that the substance was not designed for warfare, that it was created for our higher rituals. But the officers wasted no time pumping our artillery shells full of that gas. That's not how gas artillery shells work. At last, we reached the gates of Dock MU-514, the threshold of the metal nightmare that was Manufactorum Sigma S-13. However, the initial attempts to storm the dock shattered against the enemy's defences. Mago's Dominus Opticon 22 proposed a tech sabotage. He could send small Skitari units behind the enemy lines and have them subdue the spirits of the area's defence systems. Thorbald, the fierce leader of the Space Wolves, proposed to send infiltrators beyond the walls to kill enemy officers and weaken the dock defences. The Lord Captain ordered to... Um... Anyway, let's detail the reason why the first assault failed. That's a pretty good idea. Why did the first assault fail? 
The influence of the Rune's powers had corrupted and twisted Doc MU-514 beyond recognition. Many potential approaches were blocked by walls of flesh fused with metal and anomalies that bent reality around them. Hundreds of possessed machines assembled on Euphrates II rose against us. The enemy was suspecting us to strike and we needed to disrupt the defenses before attacking. Carouse. Really? Really, I've got 100% of succeeding my carouse test. Sure, pump them full of gas munitions first. I'm sure that'll affect the mechanical defenders quite well. As per regulations, we waited until the gas cloud allowed minimal visibility, checked our gas filters, blasted the gates with our tank smelters, and charged in. Many heretics had already perished at the hands of their comrades who were fighting nightmares only they could see. We had no trouble cleaning up the rest of the disjoint lunatics. Ah, gas warfare. Truly, we should embrace it more in our current year. It took us many days to break through the metal heart of the Manufactorum. On the third week of the assault, the vanguard was halted and swept away by a salvo of plasmo plasma macro cannons. Excuse moi. Void weaponry. <sighs> Scorning every can of sacred engineering, the heretics had plagued, 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 placed the hull of an unfinished void cruiser. I was about to say, on t on tread several kilometers long. <laughs> Oh my Jesus, they've created themselves a, um, what, what is it, or, Ordinatus? Ordinatus. Is, yes, it's an Ordinatus. They've made themselves a fucking Ordinatus. God help these poor fucking souls. I'm very glad I'm in orbit right about now. Okay, well, that's going to certainly increase the casualty rate rather spiffingly, I do imagine. Hmm. Very well. Not Alfarius for five dollars. One of the Cypher's Cane knolls indicate that this is indeed how gas shells work. Just pump a vac a vaccine into them after removing the previous gas. Ah yep, they've um, they've created they've they've created assault railguns. Hmm. Lordis Obscon 22 insists that we retake the sacred machine, for the vessel has been in the making for many decades, and its destruction would have met, meant a great question. tragedy for the Imperium. The <laughs> it came as a surprise to all when the Space Wolf Lord Thorvald supported the Magus Dominus. After Lord Captain had reconciled him with the Explorator leader, Thorvald had tamed his pride and spoken favor of the Tech Priest's cause of liberating the noble Maria machines. No, I mean, I would love to liberate them too, but they're literally fucking railway guns on tracks. Are you entirely certain this is feasible? The side was both terrifying and mesmerizing. A majestic cathedral that was designed to cut through the void was instead resting on the threads of a size that staggered the imagination. Those threads were grinding buildings into dust, and the ship's heavy cannons were incinerating entire tank formations. How could mere mortals hope to defeat a behemoth like that? Uh, blasting mega charges, demolition minus a hundred. Yeah, it'd be difficult to blow one of those things up. Had an entire void ship dropped upon the cruiser from orbit. Right, my best bet is tech use, and it's not a good one, so. Hey! Having the second machine on our side could have given our offensive a sizable edge. Our orders were to get a landing force to the cruiser's bridge and escort the engines there to the main cogitator. Our shuttles used the turrets' blind spots to deploy elite troops on board the cruiser. While they were engaged with the shrieking heretics, the engine seer reasoned with the machine spirits of the machine cogitator and initiated the blessed purgation protocols on the inner decks. It took us three days to drag every last cultist corpse out of the compartments. Slipping on pools of blood mixed with sacred dungeons, we made it into the machine cathedral, a gargantuan hall breathing with the flames of a thousand furnaces. The last bastion of the enemy army. That was when I first faced the word bearers, the traitors of humanity, and unworthy sons of the Emperor. What could we mere humans possibly do to match their unholy, bestial rage? Well, we throw the space wolves at them, that's what. Place that space wolf at the forefront of our strike. Yep, that one. Uh, Uwufgar. <laughs> Look! Shiny, shiny, evil space marines. Uwu them. 
Woo them now with all your furry ferocity. The Emperor's angels themselves, though, the charge that day. Magnificent in their rage, they forged a path for us to follow, and even the appalling champions of the arch enemy could not stop them. They were ooed, ooed to death. While we distracted the enemy with suppressive fire and a hail of grenades, our unyielding Wugars charged the word bearers and tore them to pieces, fluffing them. We were the anvil of his wrath, and they were the feathers, tickling their little pickles. And that's when it came. There's more? There's worse stuff? We've got something worse than a fucking Ordinatus, do we? Doom Scream. An ancient and bloodthirsty hell brute. Oh, that's not too bad. A fucking hell brute? Are you kidding me? We've found- we've got an Ordinatus. A hell brute's really not that big of a deal. A merciless executioner forged from Adamantine the Ceramite. That single foe was repelling our assault one after the other. Bring up the fucking Ordinatus, then. Turning hundreds of soldiers into bloody pulp. For as long as that abomination lived, we had no hope of reaching the heart of the enemy citadel. The dar-eyed Thorbold volunteered to track down and destroy the vile spawn, but fate had other things in store for him and his brothers. His space wolf pack was to be the first to storm the machine cathedral, and thus Magus Dominus Opticon 22 assembled a cohort of elite Skitari, and said that he would locate and eliminate Doomscream. The soldiers were whispering that he was willing to activate the so-called Guaranteed Annihilation Protocol, a terrible and ominous ritual that is as lethal to the enemies of the Omnissiah as it is to his faithful servant. I questioned the survivors. Those lucky enough to have escaped with their lives had little to tell us. They remembered a terrible howl hanging in the air and a death machine impossibly quick for its size, dismembering people and crumpling tanks with its horrific manipulators. This enemy was ancient, devious, and utterly mad. The heretic's mind was clouded by rage and hatred, and his body was bound within a prison of metal and mutated flesh. Hmm. We're gonna have to try the weapon skill. Ah, got 75 and I failed? Mm. The fight was grueling and bloody. Even the Lord Captain's retinue could not pierce Doomscream's indestructible armor. It seemed that the Lord Captain's abundant luck was about to run out. I know, right? 75%. Hmm. But then Opticon 22 and the Skitari and Thorball Space Wolves joined the fray. Their strafe forgotten. The two commanders assailed the unholy weapon of mass destruction. It was the rogue trader's wise guidance that allowed their strikes to pierce the Dome Scream's armor. Brutally wounded and humiliated, the profane executioner had no choice but to flee from the fight. The abomination's torn pincer fitted with an ancient and powerful bolter became the rogue trader's rightful trophy. At last we reached the machine cathedral. We saw a yawning lift shaft left behind by a colossal land gnawing drill that had burrowed for kilometers into the depths of the planet. There deep below lied the last hiding place of the heretic's leaders. Hundreds of grenades accompanied by promises of swift judgment were hurled into the pit. Such was our righteous anger. I hope it wasn't deeper than a couple hundred meters then, because, you know, a three, four, five second delay is going to see those grenades explode before they hit the fucking bottom now, aren't they? The planetary assault was a resounding success. The enemy forces were shattered and broken. A small fraction remained in the machine cathedral, but the rest either had been destroyed or were destined to meet the same inevitable fate soon. The Lord Captain's retinue and the Space Wolves band delivered, delved into the shaft, heading towards the heart of the machine cathedral. We watched them leave with reverence in our eyes as we were settling, setting up a perimeter, perimeter English, around the entrance. We knew that the true outcome of the Battle of Euphrates II depended on them, and that our fates were theirs to decide. Ah, yes. Fighting against millions of men and all that is a child's play, yes. It always comes down to two generals fighting each other, you see, yes. I don't think that's how that works. I definitely don't think that's how that works. I absolutely do not think that is how that works. I think that is bullshit. Especially considering that my army has two other leaders. In fact, three, if you count the inquisitorial representative, which I do.
Now what are you doing? You trying to summon something gay? Something large? Something that's gonna be acting in my turn? Or along the cruel? I said about Contrag Con Voitvega, who sends it aside, has completely mutated turquoise flesh of her eyes flash upon seeing you. 45%? Hey! You can feel the strings of the surreal force emanating from the sorcerer's fingers and wrapping around the enormous disc of the drill. He is feeding its sacred batteries with his profane magics, as if it were the motive force, subjugating the tech priest's creation to his will. I see you, mortal thing. I sense your meek mind. So you are the one who was so eager to meet me on your own demise? Rejoice, Brother Twilight. Oh, today you become the new rogue trader. Yes, master. I will rectify my mistake and reclaim what was stolen. Feet as the drilling machine, massive tunneling shield, the spider mechanism, and north through underground rock, bunker bulkheads, reinforced with my mind, or anything else that may lurk in the planet's depths. Ah. Is it about to head down to the planet's core and explode the, explode the entire world? Mission, initially an attempt to persuade the size majestic beast to awaken and rend the world's flesh. Yes, it's going to head to the planetary core and drown us all in magma. Okay, fair enough. Maybe this entire um, campaign does rest upon my soldiers. Sol so shoulders. English. Jesus. Um... Yeah, no more words. Kill them. I'm getting sick of... I'm, I am getting sick of reading, actually. The wolf lets out a shilling. Ooh! And his pack ready their weapons. Let those who blaspheme against the true gods beg for forgiveness in vain. Let their lips be sealed. Let their hands be severed. Let their souls be raped, raped, and scourged. The space wolves are like, I know we're technically shock troops, but we're going to chill up here and fire ineffectively down below. Don't worry, Rogue Trader. We will actually do literally no damage this entire engagement. Uugar. A glorious fight awaits. Take heed with the silver-tongued traitor, for he is old, sly, and strong. But by the old father, the wolves will spill rivers of his blood today. A little wall vagina over there leering at you, Thorvald, in case you were. Oh. 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 Have you encountered Urlon before? No, or else his head would still be hanging on it, wouldn't be hanging on his neck. But my pack has heard plenty about his strength and ignominious misdoings. One can see the evidence of his malefactions all across the Coral's expanse, like bear tracks upon fresh snow. We stalked him and looked for a chance to clamp our jaws around his throat. But the Craven knows well how to hide behind the backs of his heretical lackeys. <laughs> I'll deal with him. You're a brave one. You're not easily deterred. Good. Then find a way to reach the tunneling platform while we give the Menji Sorcerer something to worry about. Halbrandt, you stick to the original plan. Take two brothers and go after Doomscream. Our scouts reported that he took refuge here in these depths after being defeated in battle on the approach to the Machine Cathedral. I want to take the unholy tin can that holds this traitor's train back to Fenris. Good hunting. We won't fail you. You will. Are you dual-wielding heavy bolters, my boy? Yes, you are. Good luck on fucking firing those. Proudly tre tread the hunter's grim in the chase of a beast of steel and blood. Fangs bared sharp in thirst of prey. Let glory cloak their mighty gait. Doom screams. He hides in this then. Step aside, Halbert, and I will be the one to slay it. I claim this query for the baleful howl. Um, who are you? Well, the Mrs. Heretic, a hellbrute whose veins boil with poisonous rage and savagery. His mind and body ever since warped by the ruinous powers that his very existence is in the front of the All-Father's warriors. Tread lightly when facing him, young brother. Yes, the beast is mad and hideous, but he is withal mighty, old and graced with the arch enemy's profane patronage. His hateful sermons abound with maleficence, and his weapon claimed the lives of hundreds during the assault. We grievously wounded him, true, but we haven't seen the last of our foe. Ulfa, we set to hunt a beast. Stop speaking to me, I wish to go wage war now. Oh, a new neat. challenge for me?
Speaking of... Website reveals something. Did I, uh... I didn't give you that melter gun, did I? Do I have a melter gun? I do. Right here, you carry that. I've got this sneaking suspicion we might need a melter sooner rather than later. And you're carrying the, yeah, 80 armor penetration. Maybe I should level up too, who knows? The Alternator for five dollars. So how art? So art? So how art? So art? How would you rate the Empire building of this game? If my love for the Silver Mine didn't give it away, that's kind of my thing. Well, Owlcat always adds in a little uh, Empire building or troop management. The Void Battles are fairly basic and they're not particularly interesting. They're cool and I like that they're there. Uh, at least they allow you to illustrate the battles. The Empire building is mostly just uh, build things. <laughs> Which is um, not massive either, I will say. But, you know, it adds a little bit of stuff and that's all it really needs to do. It adds a little bit of spice. No one's best of the enemy's deflection rounded down. That sounds decent enough. Reliance, joint offensive, logistic superiority, nerves of steel. I don't even know what the 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 fucking talent tree in this game is too large. Mm, well, I can't burst fire, so it's kind of pointless. One less for Cassia? Why not? Hey, Ballistic Seal. I do like Ballistic Seal. Resolve is increased by Fellowship. Sure, why not? Ubugar, my boy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, definitely do that. Definitely take that one. Head of cat is for measure, gets one turn to attack turns of combat. Why not? Right, your weapon skill is 95, so let's make that a hundred, shall we? Just for shits and giggles. Cassia. Any more psychic rating for you? Mm, no. Firebrand. Uh, so if you're definitely a terrible attacks of opportunity and cannot dodge them, very specific. Final starter, build protection. Disarmor, she doesn't really do a whole lot of buffs. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Plus two perception, not particularly useful. Veil degradation, eh. Service guarantees citizenship. Ooh, Resolve is always nice. Psycho Psystar. I find the Space Wolf too much of a meme. Wolf, wolf, wolf. Everything. What is an alternative? Less cringe chapter. Chapter that can fill their role. Um, I tend to agree. Wolf, wolf, wolf is a very uh, fine description of the Space Wolves chapter. Flag bearer. Flesh wound. Ooh. That's pretty good. Um, hmm, hmm, 
I mean, I'm biased and would say Blood Angels, honestly. Because the Blood Angels, at least they shut up with about their thing. You know? Their entire thing is we're cursed, and so they shut up about it. They're not going to go like, blah, 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 blah. They're only occasionally, when they start freaking out, they're going to go like, please look away. I'm going to have a moment now. Ooh, that was pretty good. Critical hits? Sure, why not? They're not as eager to talk about their defining trait. And Argenta, what do you have? Merely makes another single attack, good. Play pre to critical damage, good. Ballistic skill. And enough balls for everyone, it's not bad either, I guess. Plus 10 ballistic skill, 2 MP. Now, nah, really necessary. Now, that one, though, the point blank one's pretty good. There you go. The Holtzinator for another five. Also, I love how much you, Dev, and Sargon bicker over the price of nails when nails were not used to construct log structures. Well, I wasn't even told to be a... Oh, Garfus Gitari. I made a whole list because Sargon was like, hey, if you make a Join list, that'll prayer. save us a lot of problems. And I can just assume that you do the things on the list. We did not assume anything the light of terror shines on the for list. Us. Not a single thing did we assume. We went through every single painful piece of that. Every last one. As the Emperor commands, I act. Can you shoot those or are they uh Yes, no. This is This is not the you get to initiate this combat. This I'm is the uh need take leave this is speaking of their bit here type of combat. Is that a defiler I see over there? Huh, neat. His supreme glorious greatness, an arch of terror, von Valencius, conqueror of steel, and smiter of true flesh. We initiate the capitulation protocol. Nowhere under this chrome firmament and leaden haze is there a cogitation array capable of designing a productive method of opposing you. Your indestructible legions have annihilated all who dare to stand in their way. No matter what we threw at you, it all turned to dust, which your servants then trample into oil and soot. Our survivors are few. Mercy. We beg for mercy. Now this sounds like a fucking trick, doesn't it? I mean, if you put down your guns, I'll consider it. But, I mean, I'm just going to shoot you anyways later on. But I might be able to avoid a combat, which would be kind of nice. Ah, no, it's way too fucking sus. Kill them. Jesus Christ, kill them. Oh. They were actually surrendering. Oh. Really? Huh. Why? Haven't I studied time. hard enough? Right, I didn't see that coming, I'll happily admit. They were actually unironically surrendering. Shall stand in my way. Ah, I promised that despicable butcher Tarvantius that I would watch him die. And I kept my promise. Oh, blast it all. I also swore to piss on his corpse. I am uh, proud you, that the von didn't? Valancius dynasty does not let old grudges go unanswered. You didn't let piss on his corpse? Let every know that a crime against the rogue trader will bring doom upon them. That's a pretty shameful display there, Ugar. If you didn't urinate on him, how do you know he's dead? But you, my emperor! Ah. 
Doom Scream, I take it? Or Hell Scream, or whatever fucking Transformer name they gave you? Hell Doom, maybe? Doom, Doom Helm? Heckle Peckle? I, I don't know, I lost track. Happy. What's your ball? Mmm. Ah. Sneezies. I am a navigator, not a servitor. So, Idolette, can you, uh, can you see anything up there? Sort of. <sighs> if I must. That is two action points. Okay. So just piercing a shot and we'll try to kill that one, I guess. Nice. Uh didn't quite kill it, damn it. If it serves your cause. Alright, so I probably don't want to go close to the I giant sparky thing. Pet monkey. The giant sparky thing is probably evil and bad and negative and the extreme. Me? If you insist, Lord Captain. Heresy is the question. We'll Fire get you into answer. cover. I feel like this be is probably not, not going to, to be a fight I wish to rush. Incongruous in Defiler. 2,950 hit points. Alrighty then. Um, so that isn't Hellscream or whatever his name was. I mean, he didn't look like a Hellbrute, so... Why? Well, let's see. Which one of these can you kill? Can you kill that one? You can. I understand your intent. Pew. And then free kill. Pew. If I must. 31. Very close. Annoyingly close. Right, I'm kind of hoping you don't get to shoot that immediately. Uh, plasma battery. So do these do these blow me up or something or? Okay, I I'm going to assume. In righteous fury. Yes, they're they're not going to zap me. Okay, that's nice to know. All right. Um. Honestly, I should have gone with that instead. Yes, I should have. Um. It's got so many hit points, I'm presuming it wants me to do something with something that isn't, you know, that. And that's my it. general assumption. This is why I was chosen! Lots of shots. Not necessarily a tremendous amount of damage. Doubt is for the weak. Faith without deeds is 325 hit points. As okay. the Emperor commands, I act. Oh no, you have like... It's like every other turn, isn't it? Oh my god. Okay, so it's going to be literally impossible to avoid his barrage then, basically. I hope I'm mistaken when I say that. I really hope I'm mistaken when I say that, because that would be an unfathomably annoying mechanic. How can I not? Oh, I'm out of range. Um, all right, well, splat. Isn't this a job for the serfs? As duty demands. Wait, I only got to use one of those now? Why? Why did I only... Oh, wait, no? I have lots of hit points left. Did they nerf Cassia again? God help me. They did, didn't they? If only that were possible. Ah, uh, why? 
That is foolishness. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Right, try and get that guy too. Good shoot. So shall it be. Service guaranteed citizenship. Yes, it acts every turn. In the cold embrace of death. Oh god, not again. I really fucking better. hate these encounters. Okay, so I need to I need to do it with the assumption that he will basically move every single solitary turn, which means I cannot run any characters up there because he'll just kill them. Ah, the real alternator. I'm still really sad about how that campaign ended. You were so close to being able to go on the crusade while building your character's reputation and saves in the world. I blazed from Sargon and V. Like, it just never ended. It, it just never ended. Alright, well, I mean, I was surprised that your surrender was serious, but you're still heretics, so I'm gonna shoot you, and... I mean, you were Victory gonna get shot awaits. anyway. There, there was no situation in which you aren't going to get shot, so deal with it, I guess. Helms, woman of the Soul Sea. Is there anything over here that uh, is there like Thanks a secret thing craft. that I need to, you know, every make it not act every turn? One of these. That looks dangerous. Let's not. Now. <laughs> Thank you, Ulfa. I am pleased to know that I am worthy of the Space Wolf's trust, and even more pleased to see it in the motley flashes surrounding your radiant soul. All right. None shall stand in my way. I am way. presuming that these things have something to do with the puzzle, because this is basically a puzzle boss. Because there really ain't a whole lot of way to deal with a boss that kills your characters in one shot that acts every Follow single turn. Lead. So I am guessing... ...that the game wants me to find some alternative path. And that I was intended to simply just intuit this. Swirly purple thing? Bad? Victory awaits. I rise to the occasion. Well, regardless, I'm going to be passing through a swirly, swirly thing. I'll lay claim to the stars. Nope. Oh, there were traps. No? Yes? Oh, they were traps. Okay. I'll ah. see you destroyed. You know what? That's relatively preferable, actually. You have been ambushed. And were we? Were we really slow close to going on the course. crusade? See, I, I think basically what pushed everyone over the edge was when we'd finally gotten everything up and running. When everything was, was at long last done and finished. We'd established our fort. We had defeated the siege crocodiles. We had brought our people. We'd started that preparing food. We had done everything we could possibly think of then the orcs appeared that was what pushed everyone over the brim because it was the beginning of yet another lengthy quest line and everyone was just uh, no no tired of quest lines don't want to spend any more time on silver I island understand your intent sick and tired of silver island because I don't know. I don't know if we really were that close to going on the crusade. Favors the swift. I'm not so sure. I think maybe we had another five years of walking ahead of us. That is what I suspect. If I must. Ancestors, guide me! 
Cassia, my little dear darling. I would like it if there was some cover here. Uh, there isn't. I am a navigator, not a servitor. They did nerf you again. You can only attack once now. Ah, oh, goddammit. Why? Why always be so mean to Cassia? If you insist, Lord. I Captain. think Cassia's received a nerf in every single solitary patch. Kick you into high gear and please Cold kill the screen. Right, well, I hope it's so dotted it'll die by itself. I suffered worse. No. It was not dotted enough to die, and then it charged killing half of my fucking team. Nice. And then the game bugged out because it placed its character inside of me. So it carried out an illegal move and then bugged itself stuck because it carried out an illegal move. Fucking brilliant. Uh, Outcat Games. Why do you allow the NPC to carry out illegal moves if you know it's going to fucking bug the game? Oh no, again. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. Uh, why must you do this to me, game? <sighs> but he also said, and V will end his campaign too. It will end not with a roar, but with a series of rapid streaks of unreasonable and unfounded frustration. Quite possibly. Game, please stop doing illegal moves when you know you can't do it. Video game, you are not programmed to break your own rules. I hope. Despite all evidence of the contrary. You have become the All Father's worthy instrument. So it shall be. It just kind of teleports them away, which I suppose is fine. It's better than them being stuck there forever. Feel the icy bite of death. I should have kicked it just for good measure. Right, well, Argento almost died just uh, from getting smacked by two ambushers. So the let's get her away. Will be undone. And give her a heal. Administration is a holy task. I'll do it. Can I shoot anything? I can. Not well. As the Emperor commands, I act. But damage is damage. Faith without deeds is worthless. Right, I find myself somewhat isolated from the rest of the pack. Um Nothing I can't do. Cassia. Let's see. If I may. Let's try and stun some of them. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Already done. And buff. Nothing I can't 90 do. Ninety hit chance. Oh, and I hit it too. Unusual, but I'll take it. Out of lard. These are disturbingly tough I will do my duty. That's not the Seneschal's job. 171 damage. Nice. Victory is imminent. Thank <laughs> you. 
Taunting scream. The deal also says you still had 98 crocodiles to defeat. I suspect we did. I really do. Hmm, I'd really like to kill that, but I think it has too much hit points for me to actually kill, sadly. I sense something nearby, if it serves your cause. I am not your Zenith pet, monkey. Uh, not bad, not bad. If it serves your cause. Toxic gun is pretty good. Cassia, how are we supposed to get you out of this predicament then? Hmm. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Let's debuff them a little bit and If I may. Yeah, they've given all for abilities cooldowns, I think. Cooldown one round, cooldown one round. Cause she used to be able to cast multiple of those. Maybe was my did my old stick allow me to do that? Type. Did uh, my old stick allow me to do that? Uh, infusing, so last one. No, it's next turn. The boss stacks and falling until now. I guess next willpower. Um, no, not that one at least. I think they nerfed her. I think they nerfed her again, which makes me rather sad because. I feel like she's already gotten smacked with a nerf stick quite frequently, honestly, but... Mm. Isn't this a job for the serves? Not a problem for me! Stream of Zinch, still looking... Unfortunately, rather healthy. Oh, come on... Can you hit it? No, you can't hit it either. Alright, well, I've taunted that one and I've got this one locked down, so hopefully she'll be able to. Ah! It's ignored the taunt, or I guess technically not, because that kind of did kind of attack out of blood. Oh, I see. This is a constant spawn thing, is it? Alright, well. Is that all you've got? I gotta deal with the screamer first. Once the screamer is dealt with, then I can try and get the herald over there. Good job, Uwugar. Can you... Oh god, you can't actually pass there at all because... <laughs> because that area is a little bit too None wide, isn't it? Than a of the yes, it's, it's a little bit too wide. Uh, okay, well maybe they'll come to me. Guided by faith. Okay, this is actually a brilliant opportunity. As the Emperor commands, I act. I'll do it. Call your shots. As the Emperor commands, I act. For you, my Emperor. Mm. <laughs> mm. This is why I was chosen. Not bad, not bad. I'll do it. I'll activate that for next turn. Okay. 
Alright, well, you're not hitting me, so I guess that's fine. Is that the last thing? No, that's the first thing back, actually. Um, pink horror. See, I don't want you to go over there and tag Idolet, but I don't really have any good way to stopping you from doing that either. I don't think the liquefy grenade is really going to do the job. Finest hour. Would that benefit me here in some way? I Potentially. Yes. If I remember correctly how this works. Actually, that's not going to do enough damage, is it? Because I'll be able to do that and then that shoot for the weak. several times down there, I think. As the Emperor commands, I don't 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 kill Open your eyes, <laughs> or I'll open mine. Nice. Good job. And you've managed to miss Cassia with most of that. Good job. I'll do it. Thank you, my Emperor. Ah, got so close. As the Emperor commands, I act. <laughs> Darn nation. Okay, well. Faith without deeds is worthless. Level and slaughter. I'll do it. And charge up that for next turn. Alright. Oh, right. That's right. 90% hit chance. Easy. And kaboy. Me was your biggest ah, right. I forgot about that. Um, Italy. Be so kind. I understand your intent. I deal Good girl, little lads. Good girl. Good grill. You want a fine grill, little lads. A fine, fine grill. Nothing I can't do. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Absolutely not. A fine grill indeed. Um. Works no limit on town, but in fact, this turn. Yes, oh, I've got so Valencia. much resolve right now that I might as well fucking go for it. Indeed. You cannot stop Adelard. Adelard is coming to fuck through. Whether you want it or not. One fewer target. Follow my lead. It will be done. Reduced to dust. Ah. The fact that they spawn little ones whenever you kill them is mildly terrible. <laughs> Blue manifestations, they're not. They shouldn't be involved. But he'll also later just hire a guild licensed corporation and they'll take care of everything for you. Saga of Ricard in episode 31. Ah. <sighs> It was, I, like, we, I talked to him, too. I actually talked to him. Like, hey, this isn't going to take forever, right? I was like, no, 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 no. If we can I make must. this quick and easy. Uh, betrayal. That was the, the truest this anime betrayal I have ever experienced in my I'll life. You moving no more. Never again will I believe Sargon when he says something is quick and easy. I will always assume him to be telling me fibs. Trying to abuse me of my, me and my trust. I am a navigator, not a servitor. Damn, giving her only one attack makes her a lot weaker, doesn't it? I'll show Adelblad. you why navigators are feared. At your back and call. One fewer target. It will be done. Yeah, all dead. Tried and tested Keep tactics. Going, Keep going, Adelard. Keep going. Indeed. I'm not interested. Target well struck. I took care of this one. Fine swing, Adelgar. Fine swing. At your beck and call. If anyone is going to break through this mess, it will be my Adelgar. Isn't this a job for the serfs? 
Right, let's see. Run and gun. And then As we the kablunky that. I am which lets me shoot another attack. No? Oh. Tempting, but I feel like Uwugar might get pissy with me if I do that. If hmm. only that were possible. I at least wish I could hit something with my staff. But old Zeno says, you keep saying we can macro macro manage this. We both know that's a lie. Hot whatever episode 31. What is the I feel like I feel like I remember saying that, right? Yes, I do feel like I remember saying that. <laughs> it sounds like something I would say at that point. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. Appear behind me, all creepily like. Kick. Right, it fell down. Good. Yes, yes, continue to try to hit the Space Wolf. You fucking witches cannot hit the Space Wolf. I just don't think you're gonna be all that dangerous, frankly. Rejoice in battle! Hmm. I'll do it. Let's see. Faith I am hoping this doesn't shoot worthless. Space Wolf. <laughs> None can escape the Emperor's judgment. It does not shoot Space Wolf. Good. It still creates more enemies for me to deal with, but. Uh, number of regular attack use their maximum of around fire, minimum two using the weapon of the attack normal cost is less e across the ECP this there's no vanity. Okay. Power resides in the will of the righteous. Let's do that, because that will give me a bunch of little shots. Now, if I shoot you, what happens? The video game crashes? I'll do it. Oh you you can't shoot that, okay. This is why I was chosen. <laughs> As the Emperor commands, I act. <laughs> Doubt is for the weak. Kablooey, 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 Kablooey. As the Emperor commands, God, I wish you could I just act. stack up the attacks and be like, hey, this is how many attacks you should use and just it. scatter them out. That would be very nice. This is why I was chosen. Boop. Is a what is this rate of fire now? Twelve! Oh boy, Jesus! Oh, 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 oh. oh okay. Because remember, she gains extra rate of fire now, I think, for every person she kills or something, but through a, an ability. Rate of fire, twelve. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you, my emperor. That means she fires... What? Twenty... No, Twenty-four shots. Eradicated. In a in one rapid fire. Oh, that's pretty chill. That's pretty. That's pretty cute. As the emperor commands, I act. And she always hits the first shot due to rapid fire, so I am actually fine shooting a 38%. That does not matter to me at all, in fact. Hello there. I didn't know you were down there. For you, Just... my emperor. I'm sure I'll run out of bullets eventually. I'll do it. I think, maybe, possibly. This is why I was chosen. I've long since lost track of what bullet I'm on. I just kind of keep shooting now until that the icon the doesn't pop up anymore. Just keep shooting, shooting, shooting. Hooray. Have I run out of things to shoot at? No, not quite. As the emperor commands, I act. For you, my emperor. Nope, still not done. <laughs> this is why I was chosen. Because of my remarkable rate of fire. There we go, we're done. I'll okay. do it. 
All right, that was so many shots, she actually recharged the entire entire bar, which is quite nice. Mark Shane, Rand Paul, pointed out 1.5 million earmarked in spending bill for encouraging video games video games in New York. Saw it on Forbes. Encouraging video games in New York. Part of me is wondering why this is a thing. Not a problem for me. You don't Flat. stand a chance. Suits my purposes. So shall it die in disgrace. Nice, that finally clears that approach up. Not my specialty. Uh, I've already used my heroic act. It's, uh... Damn it. Damn it. I can't kill this thing without using my thing, can I? Carnation. Damn. Victory is imminent. Hmm? Oh no, he re oh he regains a little bit of movement speed. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Go up there. It will be done. Someone else can do this. Uh... I'd rather not. <clears throat> That's not the seneschal's job. Is that how that a works? A tactically sound approach. I see. Unexpected. If it serves your course. Okay, good girl. Piecing the shot, crack it all up, and then poison the shit out of that little demon. And finally, it is time for me to actually be able to move forwards. Yay! That isn't gonna affect him, is it? No, it is not. If I may. Die. Oh, that takes out my turn as well? Oh, god damn it. Every user never power cost minus one well, less AP. I mean There's gotta be something. There's gotta be something that does it, because what the hell is the point of a staff that makes your abilities cost one less AP? If all of your abilities have one turn cooldown and they make all of your abilities go on a one turn cooldown. I mean Surely that somewhat defeats the purpose, right? You'd think? It must be the staffs of the real horse later, maybe. Uh, the real horse later distorted noise, check the patch notes, and says she was a nerf, it must be the staff. I challenge you, damn it! But the staff doesn't say anything about that. This is why I'm very confused. Oh, good, good job there. Ooh, yeah, wonderful, Ugo. Thank you. I will carve runes out of your bones. I should have just kicked him. I, I should have just fucking kicked it. Why didn't I just fucking kick it? If I just fucking kicked it. None of this would be As a problem. As the emperor commands, I act. Right. Uh, one ally. That's two, right? Yep. Devastating attack. Let her rip. For you, my emperor. Could have been better for 25 bullets, but... You bite like a pot. <laughs> I'll live another day. Gosh darn it. Nothing I can't do. <laughs> Another clean strike. So it shall be. None can do this better than a warrior of the All Father. I also says people are people or people are memeing. I'm presuming that Obama made the boat crash on X because the Obama produced movie called Leave the World Behind, where a cyber attack causes a massive container ship to go lose power and crash. Suits my purposes. Ah, the Obamas did it. Well, that explains quite a few things, actually. 
I never did trust the Obamas. At your beck and call. It will be done. Parry. Uh, fuck you, did. yourself, Abelard. You fucking parried me, you did. Victory is imminent. It fucking parried me. It actually did. I'm sorry, Road Trader. I seem to be uh, completely and utterly fucking stuck fighting an endless group of tiny little retarded animal things. Well, don't blame me for this, Iwugar. It's your problem that you didn't clean them up fast enough. I deal death with my hands. Did the old father take your sight or your mind? No, oh, I just a little toxic love tap. It's fine. Emperor, give me strength. Adelard, would you like to continue to wail on that thing? Indeed, Please, and thank an you. exemplary strike. I will do my duty. Me? If you insist, Lord Captain. I oh, am a to navigator. Debuff the thing not a too. Servitor. I do not want to use orchestr orchestrated firestorm because uh, I have no idea where all my <laughs> dudes are, and worse. I think that I am going to be shooting more of my guys than of anybody else's. Uh, right. Kill. Thank you. Wolves rip! I will carve runes out of your bones! Very grateful. Now uh, you stay there for a turn just to guard See my ass. The wolf succeeds! Doubt is for Again. the weak! Devastating attack. I'll Rapid do it. fire. As the Emperor Control commands, shot. I act. Thunker, 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 thunker. I wish each one of those could be used to like... Okay, what we need to do is we need to load her weapon with like 50 different types of dotting bullets. That's what we need to do. So that every time she shoots somebody, Not she inflicts a, a different dot. Yes. That would be what we call good and Suits balanced. My purposes. I will not. Does that last until next turn? Next attack, yes. This turn, no mind. I am not your Xenos pet, monkey. You cannot force me, Elantok. You'd be surprised what I can force you to do, darling. It will be done. Okay, 70, almost dead. I from move there. as if unseen. Yeah. Battlefields are always drowned in scarlet. Come on, scarlet. Cassia. You Me? got this. Another foe Good painted girl. black. All right, that was a nasty fucking ambush. Staff of Shock Awakening. It's about time. Healy kits. I feel like I might require those. A new challenge for me? All right. Centuries of service and Duty practice. Prevails. And where exactly does this lead then? But fair when gains Cast twenty plus there. to all law skills. Okay, that's we should deal with this. Cute. Sins oh. hidden in the heart turn all. To decay. Movement puzzle. Movement puzzle fun. 
movement puzzle very fun in game where movement is not necessarily precise oh, okay so far so good never doubt me the emperor favors me today let us see what I found I have no idea where I'm going I better myself through my service but I'm going somewhere, and I'm presuming there's something cool at the end of my lengthy journey. I won't tolerate weakness. Take heed. I failed. Never doubt me. Where the fuck? Oh, I came back here. Okay. Well, that was a long when the roundabout. Are idle, heresy grows. That was a long roundabout indeed. Uh, at least I made it back to the boss fight and uninjured, so that's nice. Speaking of, uh, didn't I? Agonizing splinter pistol, exotic arc rifle. I felt like the video game told me that I'd picked something up. From newest to oldest. Uh, soul Pattern Plasma Pistol, uh, <laughs> which are actually... Jesus, those are... Well, they have a higher minimum damage, but... Okay, if these tiny plasma pistols are better than my... My one enormous plasma pistol, I shall of course use them. Ulugar, anything new for you? Mm, nope. Cassia? Hmm, <sighs> it can't be her staff though. I don't I don't see how it could be the staff. First using combat ever and ever get poor cost of one less AP. I mean, surely that would... I guess I'll equip the staff in the other slot and I can try and test it out. That would be very, very weird. Unhallowed Bellow, heretical follower. Oh, okay. So that... Is a much, much, much better Hello Heavy Bolter. In fact, it's a ridiculously much better Heavy Bolter. But it is heretical follower only, so I suppose we are just going to toss that into the cargo compartment right away. Because it is heretical, that's why. And that is tragic, because it was big and beautiful and quite cute. Toxic Flamer. I doubt I will ever see a use for that thing ever. I will genuinely be shocked if I ever find a use for it. Speaking of use, you should probably get... Moves Traumas. One old injury. Let's get some large medkits on you. To heal anyone, everyone that needs it. Four AP for the next turn. Uh, you know what? That sounds like it could be fun on Argenta. To mechanical creatures only. About 25 to 45 damage is really not worth it. At all. 25 bonus to tech use. Hmm. Hmm, 
Farm Kill Agent, Farm Skill that Reduce Power by 5, new. Short range attack from cover, this attack gains awareness, pointless. A zealous effect, that's cute. Do you have a cape? Yes, it's boosting your weather weapons rate of fire, so I don't want to check that out. Mmm, yes. Didn't really find a whole lot of interesting things, but the party is about as preferred, prepared as it is for the boss fight. As it can be. But, ah, I think that is enough Rogue Trader for now, because that boss fight looks like it's going to take a while, and this dungeon looks like it's going to take a while, so that will be next stream, then, when we get to that boss fight, and then the big boss fight, and there's also the Hellbrute, which you haven't seen yet, so I'm presuming there's going to be quite a few boss fights in this dungeon, which is interesting, because I thought we were in a bit of a hurry to interrupt that demonic ritual trying to plunge a enormous drill into the heart of this planet, burying us all in rivers of molten magma, but apparently we've actually got quite a lot of time, which is good. If they'd fucking put a time requirement on this, I would probably scream. Still, I wouldn't be me if I didn't point out the uh, incongruity in all of it, of course. Until next time, then, chat. Thank you very much for watching, thank you for your generous donations, as always, and I'll see you again, quite probably tomorrow. Yes, probably tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow, actually. We'll see about tomorrow. Maybe, possibly. I would like to do another Rogue Trader thing to keep hammering these out, but we shall see, we shall see. Have a good night, chat.